This is a Chopping It Up show brought to you by the Marching Podcast. And now here is your host, the Phantom Podcaster himself, Joe Beard. everyone welcome to the chopping it up show i hope you guys can hear me let me, let me make me sure my, my, my mic is okay here all right y'all welcome it up to the Ch- chopping it up show and get my words out i'm your host joe beard happy to be of service for you tonight got a real real good guest for you because i met this person and now like every five seconds he knows somebody that i know so we got a whole lot of connecting to do tonight and we're really excited to chop it up, Mr. Rodney Chisholm. How you doing in this podcast, sir? Hey, what's going on, man? Oh, man, same old, same old. Good to have you finally on. Uh, one of the triple plus plus platinum listeners uh, in the chat room. Rodney being there saying his thing. So it's good to have you now on so we can talk to you. Because uh got a couple, couple, couple stories to ask you about. You know what I'm saying? So uh, we definitely got to be chopping it up tonight. And uh, <laughs> shout out to all the folks that know where Rodney's from. I don't want to. I don't want to ruin anything yet. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but shout out to you know, shout out to them folks. Yeah, I will be saying you know, you you know who you are. But how you doing tonight, Rodney? Man, I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty good, man. Well, I just want to say, uh, let me give you a round of applause uh, for the backdrop. <laughs> uh, nice little backdrop. Hold on, let me get the little camera in there. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? A little Jarvis right there. So that's kind of giving it away, but you know where he's representing from. So um I actually got a couple of questions because I didn't even really know about Jarvis. So um man, we got a lot to talk to, uh like to talk to you uh tonight about. Also, somebody wanted me to hit them up while we were on the air. Because I wanted to try this out to see if it works. But somebody else was kind of like, you know, they was kind of talking noise a little bit. Oh, they said, man. They said they wanted to step in and say, a, ha, have some words. Oh, you know man. <laughs> so. You don't um, do it like that. Yeah. So so I want to try to see if that works tonight just to kind of see if I'm ready for that in the future. All right. So how we start off, I'm going to go ahead and get all the sponsors out the way. Why, why I gotta be the guinea pig, man? No, no, man, no, no, man. This is gonna be good. You know what I'm saying? We, we, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say, Rod, me and Rodney was the first ones to start this. You see what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, but no, nah, man, uh, it's gonna be cool, and uh, I really appreciate your time. But we go ahead and get out the sponsors, uh, and then we'll come back and talk with the conversation. All right. So uh, we'll go ahead and do that. And then when we get back from the commercial, I'm going to see if this person is on the line. They wanted to give you a shout out and everything. Uh, uh, shout out to people in the chat room. If you're in the chat room, I still I can't see him. Uh, but I'm going to try to connect on my other device uh, through YouTube and try to keep up uh, my little service. It ain't working right now. Uh, so uh, uh, we'll we'll get that worked out. All right. So let's go ahead and do the commercials. Uh, you listen to the Marching Podcast. We chopping it up with Rodney Chisholm. We appreciate you listening. Appreciate you watching. And we'll be right back after the commercial break, as they say. All right. So uh, we'll be back. And keep it locked, as they say. And the 
directors, have you ever found yourselves in this situation? Showtime is quickly approaching. Your budget is quickly disappearing. Your music choices are narrowing. The equipment condition is wearing and your stress level is mounting. Stop what you're doing and contact Block Band Music and find out how we've got you. Check www.blockbandmusic.com providing music, equipment, gear, and accessories to show style, core style, and traditional bands worldwide. The source for fair and factual information on your favorite college bands, blockusup.com. Well-written articles, in-depth band performance analysis, helpful resources for band directors, fun band-related topics, and exclusive interviews with some of today's brightest and most talented leaders of college marching bands. Visit us at blockusup.com, the meeting place for band fans and band directors. Hello everyone, this is Joe Beard from the Marching Podcast. Is your school, club, or organization looking for a high quality decorated apparel to outfit your students, staff, club, or team? Tired of the same old boring white t-shirt? Are you in charge of the upcoming fundraiser or special event but don't really have time to troll the internet for ideas or compare products? SAY can help with design and product selection. We can even assist with ideas on conducting an effective fundraising program. SAY can help you save time and get your message heard. So call 1-800-975-3156. SAY Marketing and Promotions. Give your brand a voice. If you're thinking about buying or selling real estate in the Southern California area, please contact Kevin Pete of Remax Patriots. He will meet and exceed all of your needs. You can contact Kevin at 951-858-5942. That's 951-858-5942. Or you can email Kevin at kpsellshomes at sbc. That's 951 Homes. All one word at sbcglobal.net. Thanks again. You want the best barbecue around? Smoky O's coming to your town. Ribs, chopped beef, baked potatoes too. Smoky O's know what's good for you. You want the best barbecue around? Smoke. Yo's coming to your town. Ribs, chopped beef, baked potatoes too. Smoky Yo's know what's good for you. Smoky Yo's, come check us out. All right, Rodney. All right, we back from the beloved sponsors. And if you could actually see. I don't know if you can see through your Skype, but I added somebody to the call, and they wanted to say hello. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and let them say what's going on to you, Rodney, man. Hey, what's up, Marching Podcast? What's going on? <laughs> what's happening? What's going on, Bridget? I was going to call, so don't get don't get brand new. <laughs> what's going on, Bridget? How you doing? <laughs> Joe Baird, how you doing? I'm making it. I- I'm making it. It's good to hear from you. How you doing in the off season? Hey, off season, off season is great. You better be glad I'm awake. I'm awake for this one. If I don't wake up for any other interview, I'm waking up for this one. Oh, oh, I'm man. Oh, I'm, 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 hey, Doctor Doctor Rodney Chisholm, how you doing? Oh. How you doing, Miss Bell? You doing all right? W- welcome to the podcast. I already. Oh, 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 welcome. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. As they say. As they say in church, welcome, welcome, wel- welcome to the podcast. You ready? You ready for it? I'm ready. Okay. Okay, I hear it. I hear it. Now, Joe, uh, Dr. Chisholm's a good guy. He, you know, he. I had an opportunity to visit the campus of Jarvis a few months back. 
very ni- nice campus. Nice campus. I never even heard of the school until recently. So it was awesome to kind of check out the campus, see they got some good things going on. Glad they're supportive of the program. Um, well, at least uh, Dr. Chisholm is supportive of our show, The Martian Podcast. So it's good to be able to show people some support. So right, right. That's, that's, that's what's up. Yeah, man. I don't know if you can see it, but you see the backdrop, Bridget? Yeah, I know they done went all out. Look at that. That's tight. Hold on, let me get another round of applause. <laughs> yeah, man, you know, we, we, we trying to do something down here. We trying to do something down here. Well, that's what's up, man. That's what's up. So, yeah, Bridget, she let the cat out of the bag. You Dr. Chisholm. But, yeah, I, yeah. I was going I was gonna to let that come out a little bit later. But that, that's all well, good. You know, you know, as a as a soon-to-be-finished doctoral student, I'm, I'm, I'm on that. I know the work that people put into it, so I try to give them their... Yeah, so that's a lot. Him, that's right. a lot of work. And trust me, Joe. When I get done, y'all gonna be calling me Doctor Bridget. Don't play with me. You hear me? <laughs> right. <laughs> Especially with yeah. You. After all that hazing, they put you through forward. You 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 better be called in. Right. <laughs> oh, that's right. Shout out to our very own um, Doctor Christy Walker, who finished her. Yeah, that's right. Heading in December, so congratulations to one of our own. Doctor Doctor Christie, that's our girl. She got done. I'm so proud of her. Yeah. So when you have, when you have that title behind the name, I try, I try to I try to recognize and honor it. Well, that's what's up. That's what's up. Well, I uh, I appreciate you calling in. Um, you uh, Bridget was the one that actually touched base. It was like you know get Rodney on the show, and so immediately afterwards I got you on there. And then I remember I recognized seeing like the name. Because the Chisholm, that's an easy name to remember. So I was like, man, where I seen that name before? And then, so damn, I'm, about, I'm about, to, about to ruin the interview. My bad. So, yeah, so long story short, um, I hooked up and uh, got you on Facebook, Rodney, and saw me and you know like, like 300 of the same people. And I was <laughs> going through all your pictures, and I was like, damn, I didn't know he knew him. I didn't know. So... I was like, man, I got a lot to ask you about tonight. So I wanted to give Bridget a shout out because she was the one who said, get Rodney on there. She was the one who said it. You know what I'm saying? So after she said it, I made it happen. You know yeah, you know, um, J- um, Joe, every year I go to Midwest Band and Orchestra Clinic and I have a great opportunity to meet a lot of directors and people in the business. And there's a lot of people that I've met. And it's so funny because band directors are the kind of people, you meet people and it's like you've been knowing them forever. Mm-hmm. And so... You know, I'm, I met some great people at the conference. I always do, but Chisholm is one of the people that um, I met during the conference this year, and had you know had some good things go- had some good things going on. So you know, I try to when people try to promote us, we try to promote them too. So I was like, ah, let me throw throw the name away. I know they're doing some good things, trying to build some things at Jarvis. So you know, I, you know, best wishes to Jarvis and the Jarvis band um, as they they continue to to build because building a program is that's that's a hard task, you know. That's a hard task. So best wishes to them as they do that. That's a that's a that's an awesome task and an awesome responsibility. People have no idea. Um, so you know, mad props to Jarvis for getting behind Dr. Chisholm and supporting him with the recruitment and all those other things. That's a good thing. Yeah, yeah, that's outstanding. And and then just like you know, we talked to the other directors trying to get their name out there, but try to get the school out there. Try to yeah. get some school, some pub, and get, you know, the, so we started talking about Jarvis. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Jarvis was cranking. You know what I'm saying? Well, I, I don't know about that word. Hold on. Say that word to me one more time, My Joe. bad. It slipped. My bad, Bridget. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Not tonight. Uh, my bad. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, everybody been, everybody been cranking. People been cranking. Let me tell y'all something before I get off this, this cast tonight. Can y'all stop this marching band? I need the people to stop all these. But community high school, whoever you are, stop it. We're over it. We're over. Give it a rest. We don't want to talk about marching band no more to the end of August, maybe the first of September. Yeah. Your whole self down and go get you some good old ratings at festival. I'm just saying. Bridget said it. You don't like me? Call me. That's what's up, Bridget. That's what's I'm up. over it. I'm serious. I'm so tired. Of, everybody's still cranking. My gosh, like you know, you know, you know Bridget. You, I made a post about that. Not too long ago. I don't know if you saw it. It was uh, talking about breaking down the different seasons. And I was like, you know, from this to this is marching season. From this to this is felt band season. From this to this 
like where does concert side where does concert fall in this? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and it's just constantly going and going and going and going. I, I'm, I'm with you on it. I agree with you. This stuff needs it, take a break. Take a break. You know they're not dedicating the time and it. You know, especially with young musicians and people, kind of be like, what, what, what do you think? You know, I had a couple people kind of comfort me when I said it before. You know, it don't matter because my opinions are it's going to be mine and it doesn't matter. But the whole idea is at some point marching band has to stop in order to teach the fundamentals and to just change how kids listen, especially with young musicians, it has to stop. It just has to, you got to take a moment because you, we listen differently from marching to concert season. And which what happened is, Often, I tell you, I'm a part of HBC Consortium. Shout out to them. The conference is in two weeks. Let me throw that. Well, actually, next week. Next so let me week. Shout out there. But I listen to symphonic bands on every level. And I tell you, our HBCU bands, high school and college, there's something to be said for the style. When the style doesn't switch and when it doesn't stop, it's so evident when it comes time to concert literature because the level of performance that needs to be there just isn't there. And I don't care what nobody say. Argue me down with it. They can argue me down. We can sit and go toe-to-toe and listen. I can prove it to you every single time. So I give shout-out to the programs who are sh- who showcasing their symphonic bands. You know, I'm enjoying watching clips of Alabama a and and some of the others who are out there uh, really working towards it. But, my gosh, you said cranking, and it just went through my whole soul, Joe. My bad, my Bridget. Entire soul. My bad. My bad. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know how I feel about that word. <laughs> I know. It, but, it, but, but you, and the ignorance. I mean, you know, I said a little bit of the ignorance. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, no, I feel you. I, I totally feel I you. You know, bandheads like that term. Musicians yeah, don't. Yeah. I... <laughs> you are what did you going to say? Bless this emo. Bless this emo. Yeah, Blastis. doctor. There you go. Doc said, Dr. Uh, Sanford, yeah. O'Neill Sanford, he's key at the conference. He called it Blast this emo. But everybody, everybody else call it cranking. Just being obnoxiously loud is what I call it. You know, people try to defend it, but it is what it is. It's all good, though. You know, uh, no, because it was something somebody. Oh, you know what? That reminds me. And I don't want to get too far, um, uh, too far along because I want to go ahead and uh, start start talking to you, uh, Rodney. Um, yeah, I don't know if you guys remember. I think two years ago now, you remember the guy put the the video on YouTube about the uh, black college marching bands. And then he didn't want to show his face. And you remember it would cause a lot of buzz because he was basically saying, oh, let's go through and look at the clips of their their concert bands. And and we didn't know if he was black or white or we didn't know. But I I remember I talked to him on the phone and then I talked about our conversation when we were still over on NBC. And that was essentially uh, (laughs) and that was essentially the argument. You know what I'm saying? Where, you You know, you talk to the guy. Yeah, yeah, I talked to him. I I talked to him on the who phone. You uh, know, I was on, no, who was it? Oh well, I don't know. He didn't. He didn't give me his identity. He had one of them robot voices, and Joe didn't know what he was saying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it, he was. Uh, he didn't give me his number. He called me from a restricted number. He was. He was very, very careful. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but I talked to him, and I, you know, Still reasoned with him, and I invited him on the show. But you know, he didn't want to come on the show because I guess you know he was getting you know. The death threats, and you know, you $10, know, people was going $10, in on them. Says it was Showtime Web, ten dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you, it I was bet a, you ten dollars. It was Showtime. a lot of folks, but uh, I bet you, you think that it, you thing. think that it's Showtime Web, and it, and he was talking about concert band. I'm trying to tell you, but you know, he was he did some footage for some other stuff for show, for a concert band too. My bet is Showtime Web. Wow, that's you know what that's that's a trip that I ain't never even thought about. Possibly, he said that who he was. The only identity he had gave me was he was in a predominantly a uh, PWI marching band, and he started to get agitated at the fact that they wanted to play like Nick, or uh, I think somebody made a post just this week. It's like oh, uh, they called them bracket bands. So now you got Arizona State coming in playing uh stunting like my daddy. And you know what I'm saying? They you know what I'm saying? They flipping the game. So I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure they got a J Bo Cook arrangement of that out there somewhere. Right. I mean, they have stock <laughs> Yeah, so so uh so Jay yeah, Bo that's Cook. what happened. And so he said he was he didn't like the fact that his his peers wanted to be so, you know, 
uh, black. And then, so he was like, hey, so let's go out and let's, so he felt, he, he yeah, so you guys remember, but, uh, but I just, with what you just said, Bridget, that reminded me of that, because that's what he was saying was, the problem was the, with the concert bands. He was like, look at this concert band, look at this concert band. He was like, they're horrible, blah, blah, blah. So, yeah. Just bring yeah, that back. That's so kind of weird because you said that Robo, 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 whatever voice, and he don't want to show his face. That's his. That's one of his trademarks. Showtime Web trademark. I should ask. I should ask if that was him. Hey, you Showtime Web. That's you. Stop playing. <laughs> I want Garrett. Garrett, if you're watching this, go ahead and post a picture of my boy Showtime Web. That's how you shut all this conversation <laughs> up. That's me being petty. Go ahead, and post a picture of him, Garrett. Knock it out the park. All right, I'm getting off here. Y'all had some fun. I'm listening to the interview. I'll be on the ch- I'll be in the chat room. All right, all right. Appreciate it, Bridget. Be easy. And, and love Morgan. Love Morgan. All right. Shout out to Bridget. And you yeah, right shout out to Bridget. Man. I, I ain't getting a chance. I ain't getting a chance to thank her, man. She ran up the top before I can say thank her. I, you know, reaching out to you, so <laughs> she watching. So Bridget, you know what I'm saying? Good looking out. Thanks. You know, Sarah, ITB love. You know what it is. Right. Right. Uh, right. So yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's good to talk to you. So okay, so let's go on and get started, man. Uh, mm-hmm. all right. So Rodney, where are you from? Well, you know, man, I was just saying somebody else I talked to you today said they know you. Rodney, where are you from? Before we get started, man, let, let me handle the housekeeping stuff, okay? Let me give a shout out to you know my president, Dr. Lester C. Newman. Okay. Here at Jarvis Christian College, handling his business, his cabinet. You know, uh, Miss Stansel, uh, Dr. Bradford, Dr. Pruitt. You know, um, and everybody that, that that makes the machine work here at Jarvis Christian College. Let me let me handle the housekeeping stuff first, man. You know, right, right. So uh, round, round of applause. Oh yeah. All right, all right. So Rodney, where are you from, man? I'm originally from Memphis, Tennessee, man. Okay, so you you from Memphis? Okay, so yeah, <clears throat> that is like HBCU country. You know, <laughs> yeah. HBCU man country. Okay. So what would you say? Oh, well, real quick. Are your folks uh, from Memphis? Is your family all, yeah, all from born. Memphis? I'm born and raised, man, uh, Memphis. My uh, my mother has been there all her life, and my dad is from the Mississippi Delta, and they moved up to Memphis um, when he was a child, and we've been in Memphis all our lives. Okay. Okay. Yeah, my folks is from Mississippi. My dad's side of the family is from Mississippi, too. Um, so you growing up there in Memphis, what would you say was your first like marching band experience or your first musical experience there at Memphis? Uh, well, I am the baby in the family. Okay. (laughs) And, uh, my sister was actually in the band in high school. And, um, you know, when I don't know if you got any older siblings, but, you know, when you get out of school and you got to wait around with your sister or your older sibling or whatnot. And uh, so I used to have to go to band practice with my sister and I sat there and just watch them. You know, my sister, we all went to Fairleigh High School. I'm pretty sure you heard of them. Yeah, I have. Uh, so, yeah, we were under the, uh, the great, the late great Jeff Huddleston out there. You know, he was a, a veteran, a, a legend in the Delta as well. A, a, a crazy saxophone player. I'm talking about just the greatest. But uh, I used to sit back and watch them. And, then, you know, when the band used to march around in the neighborhood, we used to follow the group. I mean, I was a fairly high groupie before anything. I, I used to love them. <laughs> right. And, you know, the elementary school being adjacent. So, you know, they used to have their pep rallies during the day. And we all looking out the window so excited to see them. And, you know, <laughs> that's pretty much how I... Where my first experience with band, and also uh, my dad, he managed a lot of bands growing up, like live bands in the '80s. You know, you know that's that was during that time. It was hot, you know. Mm-hmm. And my brother and I used to sneak back there, and you know, try to get them guys to show us some things on instruments and things like that. My mama didn't like we stay getting whooping for it. But, <laughs> I mean, it, it was, it was, but it was, you know, because my mama didn't want us, never want us to have that light, you know. Right. So, uh, and my dad was always on the road with him and, and managing. It was just like I tell people all the time, man. My grandmama, she was a, she was one, she was one hell of a cook, man. And uh, I used to eat Sunday dinner with people who we know as legends now. Like the barcades used to come over my grandmama's house and eat, mm-hmm. you know, and um, compunction. 
You know, all them guys that was out of Stacks Records, man, Al Green came over there a couple of times, you know. Mm-hmm. But I'm a child. I don't know these people, you know. So, right. you, know you know, uh the debages because they knew my Uncle Larry. You know, I mean, like, I was literally eating Sunday dinner with who we know as musical icons and legends now, man. Mm-hmm. You know? So, you know, I was always around music, man. Wow, that's crazy. That's crazy. Uh, mm-hmm. So... So that's at a young age. So you already said you went to uh, fairly high school there in Memphis. Like you already, you said, I already said you already was looking to be there. Do you know what you wanted to play? Like what instrument did you start going after? Well, <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> like I said, you know, I grew up in the, in the I was a, a child in the 80s. And the, one of the most <laughs> popular movies. That was out at that time was Purple Rain, man. So I, 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 I just always wanted to play the guitar like Prince. <laughs> okay. Like I mean, like I wanted to do that, and so um, <laughs> and then later on there was a movie that came out called Crossroads with Ralph Macchio. Do you remember oh, that? Movie? Th- hold up, man. Let me give you a round of applause. <laughs> man, first of all, let me tell you, man. I, I brought that up with Bridget. We were talking about that movie in one episode with Bridget, and everybody thought I was crazy. That movie was super dope, though, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's like that was like one of the greatest. I mean, it is so funny. It's like you know how, especially in the part when he was playing the Mozart and uh, and he blew it up at the end, and the yeah. teacher. Yeah. I was like, man, he ain't gonna graduate now. Right. <laughs> right. Right. But um. So you know those those type of that move does that purple rain and that crossroad, but you know my daddy got me a good time. I couldn't you know tend to get it together. <laughs> so here's another one though. Do you remember? Do you remember in the eighties that there was a show that used to come on BET called Video Soul? Yeah, with uh, with Donnie Simpson. With Donnie Simpson, yeah, yeah exactly. Man, hold up, man. Let, me, man. let me give a round of applause. <laughs> <laughs> My oh, yeah. sister, boy, my, both of my sisters used to love some Donnie Simpson because he had them 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 light eyes. He had them green yeah, eyes. Yeah. yeah, watch out, Donnie Simpson now. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> so uh, what happened was um, this was the first ever. They, I think they said this was one of the very first videos that that an instrumental that will be played on Video Soul. So I saw this one man. He played this instrument that looks like a J. And he was playing so amazing by Luther Vandross. And later on, I found out that that man's name was Gerald Albright. And I said, that's what I want to play. I want to play that instrument that looked like a J. Right, right. You know, and, and <laughs> that's what I ended up doing later on. Because later on, Gerald Albright came out with, well, this is what I do to get you in the mood. And right. then he played my, my, my. And I was just like, I'm sold. I, I want that there. <laughs> right, so, right. so the very first instrument that, that uh, I ever showed a strong interest in was 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 the instrument that looked like a J. And to this day, that's the instrument I played. It looked right. like a J. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so, so all the savvy folks, the saxophones, all the folks that don't know is the saxophone. <laughs> Oh yeah, but, uh, but, but, oh, that, yes. but no, that's but, I mean that's that's actually pretty dope. So I saw you seventy eight on Skype. Were you born in seventy eight? Yes, sir. Okay. See, that's what I'm saying. That was, we got another round of applause. They, they said nothing but the pimps, players, and hustlers was born in seventy eight. But I, but, <laughs> but that was when I was a young man. I'm, I'm just playing. Not now. Not now. We outgrown. I'll just play. I'll just play. All well, right. You were born. You was born in the seventies. In between, in, in, in the seventies up to at least at least eighty four. Man, you got it going on. Right. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I try. I try to tell folks that. You know what I'm saying. Uh. So that's that's, that's actually pretty funny. So so video so man, you brought it back. I try to tell Bridget about that movie. Man, that movie was so cold. And uh. He, he it was dope because he he basically you know what I'm saying the, the I think the 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 core of that movie was he he knew his scales I get like, you know exactly yeah he, yo, yo. he didn't come out there just be all hot hot rocking it you know what I'm saying like dude was he just broke it down pulled something out the Arbin's book you know what I'm saying exactly that's exactly what he went back to the fundamentals and beat the guy right <laughs> right and so so yeah yeah so Crossroads with with the Karate Kid y'all y'all, yo, y'all, yo, y'all check yo, it out. Yeah, it's dope. Yep. 
right. It's called crossbow. Now, hey, tell people, tell tell people not to get it confused. There were two crossroads. There was that one, and then Britney Spears came out with one later on. It's not the Britney Spears version, okay? Oh, really? Yeah, she what? had one later on. It was her and the girl from Drumline. They were in it. So, um, Crossroads, it has Ralph Macchio, the Karate Kid, the original Karate Kid, and it has uh, this black guy. Uh, his name is Joe Seneca. Joe uh, Seneca, yep. And uh, Jamie Gertz was the... Jamie the, Gertz was yep. in it. Mm-hmm. And uh, what was the white guy name who played the guitar? He was uh, Steve Bott. That's who, that's who that was. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, oh, yeah. But it was dope. I mean, that was a good, I mean, it was a really good movie. Uh, that's so like, yeah. you know, that's like one of my favorite movies of all time. That, that, that movie there, yeah. and, uh, and Tap with Gregory Hines. Yeah, 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 man. I, I, I feel you, because uh, you remember back in those days, you know, stuff would come on HBO, you had to videotape it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Vi- so I had my, my little favorite movies. You know, on a little V set. That was one of the movies I had on there. Crossroads, man. You done brought oh. it back, brother. You know oh, yeah. Man? I got it on DVD. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. All right. So, uh, so we on the same page then. Uh, and you get to high school. Now, once you start marching in high school, do you have like a, a most memorable experience while you were marching in high school? Well, I, I, I have plenty. Um, one big memorable moment, <laughs> and you know, I'm gonna tell you, growing up in Memphis and being in the band, there were like maybe four high schools at that time during that time that I was in the, in the band, and it was um uh, Fairly High School, it was Whitehaven High School, yeah, it was uh, uh Westwood High School, yeah, and uh Hamilton High School. And all of us used to always, you know, everybody, this is me not discrediting anyone else's program, but you knew at that time those were the four marquee programs of the city. <laughs> so uh, we went to the Mardi Gras in, 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 90, in 95. This was my 11th grade year. And uh, there was a band that was next to us, and they turned around and tried to play at us. So we played back at them. And St. Mary's was in front of us. And them girls did an about face. <laughs> and I, the song that they played on us was Who Do I Turn To, Man? With, uh, with a, what was that, Escape? No, with uh, 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 Shante Moore. Da, 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 oh, who can da, I turn to? Man. Oh, right. And he was okay. listening. When they finished, them girls raised they and did a uh, a ballerina bow with us and turned the rap. <laughs> <laughs> My band director was like, "We done." <laughs> wow, is it an all girls school? Yeah, that was St. Mary's out of New Orleans. Yeah, they're all girls oh, school. Oh, out of New Orleans. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's like the most memorable like band battle moment that. I like of to all this time, day. right? <laughs> well, in my high school career, because I got one in college that uh, me and Bridget was talking about a while ago. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because I definitely want to talk to you about that because you and I both were transfers. Uh, oh, yeah. We actually, mm-hmm. and it is a blessing. I know I scared the hell out of my parents, but being able to march at two HBCUs, uh, you know, that's really cool. Uh, and shout out to Travis from the uh, show style guys. He actually graduated uh, from Fayetteville State and then went on to Texas Southern. So shout out to all the people. Chris Jones. Uh, yeah, I know you go, Chris Jones. He just talked about you too. Uh, give a shout yeah, out to him. Boy, yeah. yeah, man. He transferred the year after I did uh, from Smith to Jackson State. So, uh, and we've kept up over the years. I just talked to him today. Cause he said, you know, cause he said he's gonna be checking us out tonight. So, um, but yeah, it's really cool to be able to march for two programs. So, so I'll get to that. So you had that experience there in high school. Now, college decision time. What schools were you thinking about? Did you have a list where you be like, "Whoa, I want to go to this school"? Cause you know we didn't have YouTube and all that stuff back mm-hmm. in the day. So, what was your college decision like? And then, where did you go to college? Where did you go to school 
uh, after high school? Okay, so me being from Memphis, the only two schools that we pretty much saw all the time was Tennessee State and Jackson State because of the Southern Heritage class. Right, right. So, uh, you know, every now and then, you know, we'll get a, a few that may slide to Pine Bluff. You know, UAPB it wasn't UAPB wasn't booming then. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, it was there, and uh, we had a we had a few that were probably because of our band director. You know, that would slide to Mississippi Valley. You know, uh, but it wasn't going any further than that. It was either maybe Tennessee State or either Jackson State. So at that time, you know, I mean, I'm pretty, you can attest to this, you know, the, you, you were in the band, you remember LeVar Newsom played tuba? Yeah, yeah, I remember. Yeah, I... see, yeah, me and LeVar actually grew up together. But uh, a lot of, a lot of my friends wow, okay. were going down to Jackson State. So, you know, I'm always be the oddball and go somewhere different. So I said, I want to play against y'all. I'm going to Nashville. I'm going to Tennessee State, you know? So, you know. I ended up, you know, I graduated from high school in 96. Me too, me too. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> all right, all right, my bad, my bad. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, I came out in 96 and whatnot, and I didn't go to college right after high school, you know. Uh, in in the fall of 95, my uh, high school band director, well, every year we always went to two homecomings, to somebody's college homecoming. So my, my senior year, we went to Tennessee State and UAPB. When I went to the TSU homecoming, I don't know if anybody has ever gone, but that is like one of the crunkest homecomings mm-hmm. ever. I'm talking about you will have the time of your life up there. <laughs> We kicked it. I'm talking about high school kids. I'm like, man, I'm going here. They let us go in the band room, and some of them guys let us play on their instruments, and right. we got to watch them march down the street and go into their stadium, and a lot of us went in with them, and I was like, man, I'm, I'm going to be here. <laughs> right. So I'm excited. I'm amped up. So I was like, man, the TSU homecoming like this, man, I can't wait to go to UAPBs next week. Man, we go down to UAPB next week. I'm talking about, man, it was night and day, man. That, that homecoming was so boring, man. <laughs> we all, we all, we went to the game. I, we up in the bleach of sleep, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm just saying, you know, we up in the bleach. I'm like, man. So, uh, <laughs> later on that, that, that year, you know, when Mr. Graham, he had, you know, he was freshly new at UAPB. This was probably like his maybe second or third year there at this point. Okay. He gets there and, and he gets to Fairly or whatnot. And, you know, he talked to some of the uh, some of us about coming to UAPB. So, you know, I'm I'm a little cocky, you know, the made all West, Austin to the state and jazz and all this stuff. I'm, I'm a little cocky, little something, man. <laughs> Yeah, he, he walked up in there. He was like, how you doing, young man? I was like, how you doing, sir? You know, uh, so where you planning on going to school at? I said, I'm going to Tennessee State. How you gonna, how you gonna pay for it? Financial aid, student loan, scholarships. Right. Uh, you know, my GPA is great. I'm gonna get an academic. I know I am. You know, he was like, well, you know, I'm building a program down there in Pine Bluff. I said, with all due respect, Mr. Graham, <laughs> I will be caught dead at your school. Your whole family was born. I said, thanks for the opportunity. And I walked out of the practice room, man. Like, I literally walked out of the wow. practice room. So, you know, I didn't go to high school right out. I mean, I didn't go to college right out of high school. I sat out of here. Uh-huh. You know, because, you know, I wanted to get a car. You know, you know, you 18 years old, man. You know, all you want is some wheels and honey. Right. right. So, you know, uh, there was a battle of the band in Memphis. They fall. And I'm talking about UAPB came out there in 95, 96, and man, they went from like, man, they was like probably about 35 in, in, in the last fall, and they went to like almost 180. Wow, I was like, really? Whoa. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I was like, but they didn't sound bad, you know what I mean? They, you know, they had a young sound, but I was like, no, nah, I'm still going to Tennessee State, man. Y'all don't play the Southern Air Club. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, you know, in the fall of 97, I go I go ahead and go to Tennessee State, you know, do my little thing up there, do this, do my little thing, you know. But Tennessee State, you know what I'm saying, for that band to be that good, I got bored playing into empty bleachers every Saturday, man. You know, I mean, that year, 
My 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 freshman year at Tennessee State, the black schools we had were Jackson State, Florida A and M. Uh, we played against South Carolina State at the Atlanta Classic, and we played against North Carolina A and T at the Circle City Classic. And I was just like, after that, man, it's just empty bleachers every week. Right. Man. I, like, for this band to be this good, I was like, man, I, I want to go to the swag, man. I got to go to the swag because I, I got to see somebody every week. You know, we heard, like you said, we didn't have YouTube or anything like that. So you hear the stories about the swag, but, you know, all we had was little old cassette tapes that were being passed around. That's right. You know? So, uh that was when UAPB was getting ready to be in the swag. And then, you know, all I remember is what UAPB looked like in 96 when I saw them all big. Because if I would have saw them in 97, I probably wouldn't have transferred. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know they, it's like they went from like, like I said, 35 and 95. And then in 96, they was like almost 180. And then in 97, they looked like the program I have here at Jarvis right now. Really? Yeah, they was extreme. Like, Mr. Graham just probably kicked everybody out. But I didn't know that. My mind still said 96. Right. So, right. Uh, we, we get down there. I, I, you know, you know, a couple of my, you know, my, my, my brothers, you know, they ended up be, becoming my crab brothers or whatnot. And um, they ended up, and one of them ended up becoming my KK side LB. You know, they go down there. They trombone players. They go down there and audition. And they told me about it. So I was like, man, I don't know, man. Dude may remember who I am, man. <laughs> After what you said. Yeah. So they was like, probably just don't go. So I went down and I'm trying to, I'm playing my horns, hoping that he don't bring it up. And all that. He typed, <laughs> oh, typed me up in front of the upper class. Yeah. This guy right here came down and played his B flat scale in three octaves. He got out of all this. Let's go. So we get the scholarship. I'm all excited. You know, I'm transferring. From G- you know, and another reason why I wanted to go to UAPB because they had KK side. And I was going I was gonna go to UAPB, play as KK side, and call myself going to transfer back to Tennessee State and be the only person on campus that, that was KK side. Nice. Nice. <laughs> nice. Nice idea. That's a nice idea. But, 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 but ended up <laughs> staying down there. You know what I'm saying? So I get down there. We get the band count. And uh, we get to our first playing session. So we were sitting back playing. We was, I, we were playing, and Mr. Graham cut the band off. And he said, young man, give me your hand. So he grabbed my hand, and he 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 did his fingers like this on my thing. He started looking at his watch. I was like, what's going on? He said, I'm just trying to make sure you ain't dead because you're here. <laughs> <laughs> I just started laughing. Man. That's exactly that's exactly what you said, man. You know what I'm <laughs> I just I just started laughing. I said, you know, I was young and dumb at that time, man. But uh, I you know I end up I end up telling I end up telling that story to a lot of the kids I go out here and recruit, man. You know, don't burn a bridge. You never know where you're gonna end up. You know what I'm saying? You, you know. Give a chance, whatever, you know, because you never know. I, I remember the place that I wouldn't be called dead at. That's where I ended up getting my bachelor's degree from. Wow. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Not only that, you know what I'm saying? I was uh one of Mr. Graham's. I was one of his first student arrangers. I was uh, his first student director that he had at UAPB. You know, so this guy who wouldn't be called dead ended up being one of his top students. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, you know. I had a lot of experiences at UAPB, man, that I wouldn't trade for the world, man. So that's interesting. That is interesting, the transfer between the two schools. I had never heard someone say, like, they were transferring from Tennessee State. When I had my transfer story was different because I went from Smith to Jackson State. So it was a it was a drastic music difference. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But... You were the first person that actually said that, you know, you got tired of actually playing to them empty stands. And I never actually thought about that because I only think when we when we say, oh, we about to see Tennessee State this week, it's because they playing Jackson State or FAM or Bethune. Or I never thought about the students that may go out there and they when they go play, I don't know. Uh, Martin University of Martin or Tennessee Maybe. Martin or so whatever. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So um, that's an interesting yeah, thing. I'm just saying, man, Tennessee State, man, and, I, and for people who don't know, Tennessee State have a great 
Bam, man. And yeah, I just, I, 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 I hate it. That I hate the conference that they in, man, because they have to make do for what they do, man. Tennessee State, I'm, I, that's, I wouldn't trade that experience for the world. I wouldn't. Right. Yeah, man, it's just, you know, I was young and a little manhead at that point, man. I just, I wanted to play more. You know, you said we sitting up here trying to be hype. And we hype with each other, but I want to, you know, I want to see somebody across the field, man. You know, after, after we played A&T at the Circle City Classic that year, man, that was it, man. You know? Right. That was right. it, man. We playing Tennessee Tech and Cookville and, <laughs> you know, Austin P and, you right. know, like, you know, come on, man. You know, I mean, Peace. Tennessee State is a great band, man. Tennessee State is a great man, man. I promise you. I, oh man, I, I love. I still love them to this day, man. Oh yeah, but, it's a good program. I know uh, Doctor Davenport. He's from there, and uh, well, you uh, know Doctor Davenport was a uh, quote unquote my crab brother, man. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, in '97, that was his first year as, as director at Tennessee State, man. Oh wow, that's <laughs> oh that's right. That is yeah. right. Okay. Yeah. Right, so so yeah, so you know Dr. Davenport, and then uh, uh, Mar- I think Mario Mario Warren went to Tennessee State. I think uh, Mario so Warren been- Mario Warren was a year ahead of me. He came in in '95. Well, me and Mario Warren actually grew up together. We went to the same high school. Okay, okay, okay. See, Dad, that's somebody else you know. Dude. Yeah, we went to the same high school. Yeah, he came out of '95, and I came out of '96. Yeah. Okay. You know, okay. We all we all the same teachers, right? Right, right, right. Well, that's tight. That's tight. So. So yeah, so so you understand that. So yeah, it is a great program. Um, but yeah, that 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 does trip me out. That's the first time I actually thought about it though. Like, how would I feel? I'll go to Tennessee State, but I took it for granted when I was at Jackson State where we played UAPB, you know what I'm saying? We played Grambling, we played somebody every week. And it wasn't like no sleeping. Like where you about to think that, oh, we don't need to practice this week. You know what I'm saying? That, like that's when the swag was booming, man. Right, right. So I did take that for granted. You know what I'm saying? So, so let me ask you this. So you were you crabbed in '97 at Tennessee State, or are you you went to, or you were a freshman? Your first year in the band at Tennessee State was '97, right? My whole college experience was '97. I set out a whole year before I went to school. Right, right. So, so well, because see, let me, let me, let me, let me be honest with you. I set out a year, like I said, I, I, I set the work. I ended up moving down here, and I stayed in Mesquite with my uncle because I thought that you know I was gonna either go, I was gonna try to go to Prairie View, oh. and uh, I was trying to be a Texas re- resident. I don't know nothing about Prairie View. I just heard stories about them, and I wanted to give them a try. You know, right. Yeah, but I ended up, I, I forgot that my uncle was my mama's brother, so I ended up moving, moving back to Memphis <laughs> and, uh, and, going, and, going, and, went on, and going on going to Tennessee State, man, you know? Right, right. So you went to Tennessee State there in 97. Then you transferred to UAPB in 98? Mm-hmm, in 98, right. Okay. Where, where, where did you go to Jackson? 97. So I was at, I was at Smith in, in 96. So I came to Jackson State in 97. So you were the second dude I talked to who was in that band. I, the first dude I talked to was Michael Cowens. You know Michael Cowens? That's my crowd, brother, man. I, I'm about to say. Okay, so you know Michael <laughs> Cowens. So yeah. Michael Cowens has got a, a nice little story, too, where he, I believe he went to Southern, and then he, he transferred he back did. to Tennessee State. Okay. All right. So, so y'all were in that game where against us, we ran out of songs. And y'all was just over there cooking. Y'all was just over there <laughs> You know what, man? You are the first person from Jackson to admit that y'all ran out of songs. Oh yeah, bro. see, oh yeah, see that that's my that's my other problem. People in the boom be saying I be running my mouth too much. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? My bad. My bad. I don't mean to, you know what I'm saying? But but nah, uh I nah, pressed wrong, but but nah, man, that was the first, that was probably the darkest night of my HBCU career probably because what it was you say, trumpet. So you, so you, your one of your section leaders was Derek Hardaway. Oh, what? De- oh, oh, oh man, da- you know everybody. Okay, hold on. Let, let me get in right. That's my best friend, bro. Man. Okay, so Derek Hardaway 
AKA Fat Nasty. Fat Nasty. <laughs> Fat Nasty was my uh, section leader. And <laughs> he was actually really good. Like, he was a really good trumpet player, but he was also really, like, mature. Because mm-hmm. you know how upperclassmen can be. And right. like off the chain when the band director's around. So he would pretty much keep people in line, and he didn't curse. So I wow. remember thinking, like, wow, this, this is, like, a really upstanding, mature individual. You know what I'm saying? Right. Uh, so, yeah, Fat Ass, I actually chopped it up with him a couple of years ago. It's a, yeah, he's principal in Memphis now. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so yeah. Shout out to Fat Nasty. So yeah, he he had us in line and everything. Um, but yeah, ninety seven, we went out there, and then I mean, I've even told the whole story. I told Michael the whole story. We didn't even have a a dance routine ready, and <laughs> we put we put the dance routine together Friday night. And it was so dope because it was the joint where, and y'all, cause see, y'all did it. That's what pissed us off. Was we thought we had saved our show, and y'all went on first and did like the coup de gras of our breakdown. And that's when the four, you know, you in squads of four, and and you ran in a circle, and yep. your squad in a circle. So that was like, we, we was about to tear the club up, son, with with that, and we was about to bring no Memphis down. No, and, sir. <laughs> and y'all went out there first and did it, and it was like, oh, no. I mean, it was from the stands, even the halftime show, it was just a bad night. You know what I'm What's saying? That? No. In, in y'all defense, though, when we were taking a knee, and y'all played that more money, more problems for y'all drum majors. I'm talking about, man, that was, dude, them trombones was over there wicking it bad for it, man. <laughs> And I was from the sideline like, yeah, yeah, I still remember that. Oh, yeah, yeah, we, we had some power. We had some power I still remember now. that. Yeah, uh, I talked to a couple guys from Alabama State that year, and that was our first game. And they were like, wow, you guys were, like, amazing, but we didn't have no songs. So they got mad because, like, you know, I think we, like, in – I think after the game we played like the halftime show or something. Like we, I mean, we didn't know do too many songs that time of year. You know what I'm saying? So it's funny after we left Nashville or after we left Memphis that night. I mean, dr- band directors, ev- upper class, and everybody is like, man, we need to get on our book. So like them next three weeks, man, it was like hell of high water. We were learning so much music because we had to get ready for Southern. You know what right. I'm saying? Like we, we want to be half stepping for Southern. You know? Right. Uh, but yeah, man, I always like that. Uh, shout out to all the Tennessee State folks was there at '97, man. We we took <laughs> we took an L, man. I, I, you know what I'm saying? I uh, think uh, that let me the- tell you, uh, I know you normally do this, but uh, Smash Time asked a question, man. Can can I answer that real quick? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. What he say? What he ask? Well, he asked the question is he said he see the reason why I transferred from Tennessee State is understandable. How would I prevent you know kids? Uh, how would I prevent oh, I a problem from the kids looking to, you know, in your school? That's actually a good, that's actually a good question. Well, you know, one of the things I try to do, Smash, is, uh, uh, um, one of the things I try to do, man, is I try to, you know, tell my story, you know, I mean, because my story was, was similar. Yeah. I mean, my story, you know, whatever I listen to the students is reason, you know, and, you know, at Jarvis, yeah, we are a small school. We are. And, you know, some certain things that we don't have, you know. Um, but I'm one of the people that I, I will share my experiences. And not only would I share my experiences, I will go to Lent to try to, I, whatever I can do to help you succeed, if you feel that uh, leaving is the best move for you. I wouldn't encourage it. But at the end of the day, man, it's, I mean, you have to do what's best for you. You know, uh, I do what I do to keep them here because my band is more of a, I run a, I run a strict regimen, but we more of like a family. Mm-hmm. That you can't, you can't run into any of my students I, who I've ever taught in the 16 years that I've been teaching who don't remember, well, whatever greeting I had at the time. Chisholm, Mr. Chisholm, Doc, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Who can't take what they learn from me and make it. So, 
Um, that's what I try to do, man. I, I try my best to keep them here, but if it's something that's like major related, you know, like for an example, we don't have dentistry here. So if you came here to do, you know, pretty much prerequisites or whatnot, and we don't have dentistry, then I'm going to guide you to what's probably one of the best dentistries in the, in the state of Texas, which is Baylor, you know? Mm -hmm. So I will try to get you to go to that as far as the band go. A lot of the students understand that this is a growing program and we're going to, we're going to, we're going, we're going through what you call growing pains. You know, you win some, you lose some, you know, I mean, that's happening. It even happens in some of the major programs, you know, I'm a product of that. You know, I live one great, one good band to go into a band that's building to, you know, you know, everybody know who UAPB is, you know? So if, I hope that, that I hope that answers your question. Yeah, could you say you band program too? Yeah, I'm gonna okay. I'm, 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 I'm gonna do that at the last. end. Yeah, I'm gonna have I'm gonna have you do the recruitment pitch at the end. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm gonna do that at the end. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, that's that's a good answer because I actually had a little bit more questions about that. I chopped it up with um, oh Lord, Lord forgive me. So to to Mish, to to Misha Brock Price. Or yeah. Tamisha Price Brock. I keep messing up her name, yo. Uh, but she said it was cool. But then I was like, you know, I'm gonna make sure I learn this. You know what I'm saying? And I still mess it up. I, it's it's cause it's cause we live. I get nervous. Uh, <laughs> but she she said a lot of real interesting things about building a program that I want to ask you about. Um, because the same thing, Doctor Davenport. He's in Kentucky now, trying mm -hmm. to build a uh, Simmons College. Um, so it's really, I commend you guys for being there and not, let's say, you know, being, let's say, at like a Southern where everything is all, you actually building the program. So that's actually really commendable. Um, so, okay, so so 97, you there. Did you have a memorable experience when you were there at, at Tennessee State in 97? I had plenty. <laughs> <laughs> I had plenty, but... <laughs> Let me tell you my most memorable one. I can tell the story now because I'm grown. <laughs> okay. We played against North Carolina a and in 97, man. Mm -hmm. At the Circle City Classic. And my room got caught up in some iniquities the night before. <laughs> iniquities. <laughs> and we got left at the hotel. Oh, so we had to catch a cab. Oh, no. he ain't done. <laughs> and it was only four of us now. It was just our room. Oh, that's even worse. And we were all freshmen. Oh. But oh, hold on, the wrong side. There you go. Oh. You said what? I said that's the wrong sound. I just gave him the sound. <laughs> so we get to the RCA dome. A and T gets off the bus, and I guess they saw our little band uniforms or something. I don't know, but them boys stood in front of our bus the whole band like they was warming up. And when them boys crunk up, man, I'm sorry, Bridget. When they crunk up. They rumbled our bus, man. What? And I said, I said, man, these dudes finna kill us tonight, man. <laughs> so I sat back. I was just, you know, me and the rest of my little, my little crab brothers, man, was like, man, them boys ain't playing no games, man. <laughs> yeah. I'm to my brother. They was rumbling the bus when they, they I'm gonna tell you what they played. They played Fantasy by Earth, Wind, and Fire. Oh, just a little intro, the little fan for a part. Ooh. Ooh, I was like, wow. Hey, look, so that ain't even a half of it. So you know the Circle City Press Classic got that parade going down the street, right? Yeah. yeah. Dude, I'm gonna I'm finna demonstrate this to you. We had a we coming down the street at a four-way intersection, right? A and T is like right here. Oh, hold on. A and T is like right here. And soon as we got in front of that street, just like Oh. They played the loudest hay in the middle of the barn that you would ever 
hear. <laughs> it was, dude, it was so loud that it everybody got off still. Wow. Like, I'm talking like, whoa. I, I, I was like, <laughs> these dudes finna kill us tonight. <laughs> you that's know crazy. That's crazy. Because that's kind of yeah. similar to what happened to us in 97 when Southern played on us. I'm talking about, dude, I'm talking about, dude, this is like 22 years later, and I still feel that hay in the middle of the barn, man. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I ain't never heard nothing like that before in my life, man. Wow. And, and was that the first time you saw a &T? That was the very first time. I ain't know nothing about on a &T, man. You know, I was, oh, man, all I knew was whoever we heard about, Tennessee That's State, right. Jackson State, uh, I heard the... The myths about fam, you you know, like I said, this wasn't this wasn't no this was no YouTube age. You know, if you had a if somebody had a cassette tape somehow, videotapes and cassette tapes made it, they they did more traveling than than posted level. Right. Because I'm talking about if somebody had a tape, then it, it's gonna make it to somebody's house. Right, right. Cause that was cause that was exactly that was exactly how it was. And that's why I wanted you to say, you know, your experience. We were regional, so my my dad went to Jackson State, but we were we were in Memphis every year. So I was I saw Jackson State. Now my mom, cause she went to Spelman, she talked about fam because that would be you know East Coastish or you know folks right. over there. Right. But you were not necessarily tripping off no fam. You were not tripping off A and T. And there were a lot of good programs. You know that was parody back then. It's just we didn't we didn't really know about each other. And I remember I went to fam band camp in 95, and I was like, man, I might go to Jackson State. And they was like, what's Jackson State? What's that? Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, man, they tight. But I would go to Mississippi and say stuff about fam. They said the same thing. You know what I'm saying? So it was definitely regional. You but, know? You know, but you know, Joe, I, you know, and I don't want to discredit YouTube and, you know, and all the things that you guys are doing. You know, with your media, with you and Eddie, meet me on the fifty, and you know, with with the Rogers brothers and all y'all, and and uh, uh, Showtime, whatever, all y'all little me the media people that's out there. I listen. I think you guys are doing some wonderful things, man. But man, growing up in that time, man, where the only time you had to see it was to be there, or you you might catch it on BET, a little piece of it. Man, those were the times, man. Right. Because you never knew what somebody had to come with. You know, you may have heard. Let me see. This was like ninety. It's like ninety. You may have heard, fam. You gonna play in my bed by Drew Hill. You heard but about you, it. Somebody, somebody had to tell you that. Right. Girl. You literally had to be at the game to check that out, man. That's I'm talking about. Yeah, thank you, Major Payne. I agree. That was the time to be a bad head. I'm talking, man, because every Saturday you're gonna get something. You gonna get something. You know, people don't believe me when I say, man, there was a time when ballet used to be good. You know, people don't believe that. You know, every Saturday in the swag, man, somebody, you were going to get something, man, from somebody. It wasn't just one side with Southern bullying folks or Jackson State coming at folks or, you know, or, or you can roll a coin and see if Alabama State going to do something this week or, is it, you know, no, man, in the swag every Saturday, man, man, it was, man, it was worth their drive. Right, right. And that's real, cause uh, I know, I know myself. When people were saying what I was doing, a lot of people were saying like, "Man, you know, the YouTube is kind of hurting stuff." And I think I can't remember the director that told me, but basically he was saying that he wasn't sure if he wanted to start filming his band because he didn't want to let he didn't want to let what they were doing out. Whereas he may have to change his show. Where when we were coming along. You changed your show for for the home, like you would maybe change and do a different show on the road, or maybe do a same show on the road. But you only maybe change it because you're like, oh, well, the home crowd saw us last week. Right. Well, the right. director was saying he was worried that his entire show, the the entire season was out there, and he was like, man, I don't want to have my show out there by the fifth game where we go somewhere and they already have seen my show already. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So I know, I guess, it's pros and cons uh, with it. But, yeah, man, it was definitely different back in the day where if you had a band tape, you had a VHS tape, and, man, it, had, uh, and it had a whole bunch of band cl clips on it. 
You know what I'm saying? They had a whole Shout bunch of shows. Shout out to my boy Ryan, Ryan Hicks, a.k.a. Tape Mouth, because that boy got, I'm talking about, if it's yeah. a man taking the 20s, he got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he was on, Um, he did an interview, too, with uh with Eddie, uh, Meet Me on the 50, and he was saying that, like, the first couple shows, and I think uh, Killer Kev is in the chat room. I think he said he got that 97 uh, Tennessee State tape somewhere. Uh, so. well, I used to have a season tape a long time ago because I got it because you know I want to keep the memory of my first year, man. But uh, you know, I guess one of my crab brothers came in my room and he wanted the memory too and didn't want to pay for it. I, I, I was just about to say, man, everybody got uh, somebody's story. Uh, Greg Pettis, in fact, another dude, I don't know if you know Greg Pettis, he's from Memphis. Greg, Greg Pettis and I were in the same high school band, bro. Hold on, man, dude, you know, man, you know, too many people, man. <laughs> man, hold on, man. So I'm going to bring up Greg because Greg made, Greg made me mad. So I had the dopest tape of us from 97. And so I remember you, I was, So if you know Greg Pettis, you know Mario Dennis too then. I don't know. I don't know if I know Mario. I do know Mario. I don't know his last yeah, name. All of us in high school together, man. I, I, I didn't know his last name. Yeah, okay, yeah. So Greg, long story short, Greg stole my tape, man. I was ready to go back to Smith. With my, you know what I'm saying? I just came from Smith. I wanted to go back to Smith on my spring break. I had the dope season of 97 right there ready to go. Greg stole my tape, man. So he showed it. And I need to ask Greg because he stole one of my Johnson C. Smith shirts, too. And he was walking <laughs> around the yard with a Johnson C. Smith song. I was like, Negro, how you know about Johnson C. Smith? He was like, oh, man, you know, I had this shirt for a while. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, man, I found this shirt the other day, man. Yeah. Come on, man. So, yeah, Greg, <laughs> I just thought about that. Somebody stealing band tapes. Greg from Memphis. He sure did steal my tape, man. Um, <laughs> all right. So, so that's what's up, man. So, so that was your memorable experience. You then broke down the story about you transferring in 98. So now you at UAPB. What mm-hmm. was your most memorable experience at UAPB? Man, don't ask me. That's like ask me how many breaths of air I take every day. Cause I ain't no many, bro. I'm, I'm just trying to. T- it went down in the bluff for me, man. I'm just trying to tell you, man. Oh man. Okay. My greatest experience at UAPB was crossing KK side, man. I just keep it at that. Okay. All right. So, so that's actually roll. That rolls into my next question, because you played KK side. So was that ninety eight? Would be 98. Spring 99. Spring 99. Okay, that's right. Right after that season. So then what, when I saw also that you rocking that black and gold too. Always, baby. So when did you pledge Alpha? I crossed Alpha in the spring gold too. Matter of fact, my birthday coming up on the 30th. Okay, okay. Because uh, my dad's an Alpha. So I always, you know what I'm saying, shout out to, you know what I'm saying, he, uh, he pledged at Jackson State. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, so... Lot of good memories sounding like at UAPB, uh, which is uh, which is really cool. So, KK Sai, Mr. Graham gave me opportunities, man. That man, I don't, I don't think that anybody. I, I just, I, I really, I owe it all. Well, not all, but because I got to give some to my high school director too, because he gave me some opportunities. But Mr. Graham, as far as teaching me some ropes as a student, man, I learned a lot under that man, man. Him and uh, O'Neal Sanf- Dr. Sanford, when he got there as a colleague. Okay. So, you know, but when it comes to uh, not the, not the UAPB later on in Jackson State when you ask the question, but I owe Mr. Graham as a student, man, Mr. Graham just, he took me in and it was like, you know, I'll tell this story now. Uh, he was, uh, he's also a sax player and he was my applied teacher and there were times in the plies, man, where we didn't even touch the horn. Like, he literally got on me like I was his son. Like, you know, like, literally, I'm talking some father-son things, man, you know. And there were plenty of times I came out of, out of a ply crying. It, was, it wasn't because I couldn't play Paul Crick and Sonata. It was he, he, had to, he had to daddy son me. You know right. what I'm saying? Right, right. So, you know, uh, man, I, owe, I I just owe it all to Mr. Graham, man. I love that man to death, man. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. So, uh, you now, UAPB, you done done your thing. Were, you were a uh, music education major there at UAPB? Well, it's funny, man. Uh, <laughs> I was, but I didn't start out that way. 
Okay, that was my that was my question. That would did you know even at, at, even at Tennessee State, I I didn't I didn't start out that way. Um, I wanted to be in the band and I wanted to play jazz, but what I wanted to do actually was either go to the FBI Academy or I've always wanted a life that Steve Harvey has now. You know, I wanted to act, I wanted to be a comedian, I wanted to host a radio show, host a game show. I wanted to do all that. So I entered college kind of double majoring in oral communications and criminal justice because I had no idea what I wanted to do. Okay. And so I kept towing back and forward at Tennessee State. And then when I transferred to UAPB, they told me that the two curriculums wouldn't, wouldn't I couldn't do it. So I went on chose the criminal justice side. And when that lady told me that all her tests were, were essay and her first test was I had to literally write out the first 10 Bill of Rights. Man, I'm 19 years old, man. That's a lot of work. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, you know, I started thinking real close about it. And the, uh, I went over to the oral communications department, changed my major to that. And they, I found out the UAPB had a radio station in there. So I was like, cool, man, I get up, you know? Come to find out, they don't let students get on the radio station. Wow. So... I was like, man, I got to think of something, man. I'm in school. So I went down to um, Mr. Elliott. He's now Dr. Elliott. He's a department chair at Tennessee State now. Mm-hmm. He got it. He was uh, the assistant band director and the drill writer at UAPB when I was there. And he got his doctorate degree at the University of Memphis. And then he left UAPB and became the department chair at Tennessee State. But uh, I went to him and he was like, the the uh the theory teacher for prep theory one and two so i went to him it was like maybe late mid it was like mid november right before we was gonna get out for thanksgiving and i told him i was like well mr elliot i'm i want to change my major to music so i see you in theory next semester he was like oh no rodney you know music majors don't work like that you know you know <laughs> music majors are set up if you fail one theory class it'll set you back a whole year yeah yeah. You know, so he was like, and Rodney, you missed the theory placement exam, so you may need prep theory. So it won't be till next fall before you can take prep theory. He said, but let me just see what you know. So he gave me the test. And, you know, I picked up the test and I looked at it. And I said, are you serious? <laughs> he said, no. So I picked up a pen, I mean a pencil, and went down on it. And he said, have you ever taken any theory classes anywhere else? I said, no. That's basic stuff you're supposed to know when you first start playing instrument, ain't it? Right, right. So he was like, well, you know, Rodney, I'll see you in Theory 1 next semester. <laughs> nice. You know, I mean, and the rest is history. You know, I kind of, I just stayed with it. You know what I'm saying? And um, and, and the teachers at the professors at UAPB thought that I went to a white school before I came here because theory was like, it's like so second nature to me. You know, and they was wondering how I was so advanced in it and everybody else was struggling. Right. And, uh, well, I, I'll say it now. Man, I was getting paid doing everybody else's work, boy. <laughs> 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 I'll say it now. <laughs> but, uh, they was wondering how was I, they was wondering how was I excelling at it so quick, though. You know, they was wondering it. And, uh, and like I said, the rest is history, you know, then the, the first, uh, Mr. Graham let me arrange a song, and the first ever song that I ever arranged was uh, that version of Nick that UAPB play. And I did that as a freshman. Wow, okay. Yeah, I did that as a freshman, and uh, um, I did it just so I can get picked for KK side. And uh, oh, nice. When I did that, and then uh, Mr. Graham, he said, let me see what else you can do. So, he let me do the whole dance routine music for Gremlin, that Gremlin game my freshman year. And then the rest, you know, the rest is just is, is history. You know, I owe it all to also, let me give a shout out to Jerome Hudson, the uh, chief of range at UAPB as well, because he gave me some nuggets too, as far as arranging goes. So, good aside, brother, as well. So, so that's interesting. So, it's, it's funny, I guess... I guess it had to be a part of you because 
I remember I, I started out as a music major too. You know what I'm saying? I was so much of a band head. I just thought like, oh, I'm a major in music, you know. Well, that theory was beating me down. Like I couldn't I, I changed I tried to change I tried to change my, my, my major like the first couple first couple weeks I was there because it was just rough. Yeah, man. Uh so what I guess I guess to say, you say it comes natural. What part is easy for you? Is it the chords? Did you have to play the piano? I mean, it's I don't know, man. This is that's very impressive. I guess what I'm saying that you were able to do that without having the previous training. Because every person I done chopped it up with that had like some skills in the music, they were already prepared, like from high school. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, well, when so he, like I said, when he gave me that test, I looked at it, and it and it and it and it, and it, and it, it, it was just like I was looking like, are you are you kidding me? Like this is. This is this is what prep theory is about, you know. <laughs> like this was stuff that 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 uh uh this is stuff that you know you should have learned in standard of excellence red book, you know. I mean that's the way I, I saw it, you know. Mm-hmm. And I know some people struggle with it, you know. I don't want to you know downplay anybody, you know. Music majors it aren't for everyone, but when I looked at it, I was just like, are you? Serious? Really? You know? And uh, the rest is history. And for those of you who are music majors or who, you know, studied who got fired in music, my favorite music, my favorite level of theory was their counterpoint. Boy, you get to their counterpoint and their form and analysis. I love it. Yes. That, ooh, that is it. Wow. Shout out to everybody else who can do that too. But I love it. <laughs> I'm, I'm talking about, I'm ready. <laughs> well, that's what's up, man. That's what's up. So uh, you've had your training. You have graduated. Now it's the huge thing. What am I about to do now? I'm out of school or I'm un- out of undergrad. What was the first thing that you did? You got your degree now. What was I'm the first thing? I'm went? going to Memphis. <laughs> I'm a teacher in Memphis City Schools because the band scene is on fire in Memphis right now. <laughs> this was this was in 2000. I'm talking about some. For those of you who've been around, this is when marching. No, let me let me let me get it right. This is when marching sport was at its heat online. You were with Gerard, yeah. And everything was going on with that, you know. And uh, we can. That's when we really being able to start seeing stuff. You remember that? So yeah. uh, the band scene in Memphis was like on fire. So I was like, man, let me go get one of these schools, these unknown schools, build that bad boy on up, and you know. Get into the ring of fight, you right. know. And uh, so I ended up going back to Memphis. You know, uh, my first job was at a school called Tresden High School. Um, and, and, you know, shout out to the, you know, my predecessor. Her name was Carrie Simon. She's now the uh, assistant DOB at Mississippi Valley now. Okay. But uh, she was at that school before me. And, you know, she's a, she's an excellent teacher. And uh, she she graduated some pretty good students, but uh, when I came in there, I kind of changed the vibe. Mm-hmm. And uh, we was trying to put North Memphis on the map then at that point. So uh, my best year that I had was that 07 year that I that 06, 07 year. That was my last year at Tresman. Okay. And uh, that was that was my best year at Tresman, man. I'm talking about. I took the uh, I took the Osborne High School approach. I don't know if you remember them out of Detroit. No, One no, year, no. this was maybe old two, maybe Osborne wasn't very big at all. They had like maybe four of everything, like literally four baritones, four trombones, four <laughs> trumpets, four mellophones, four tubas, and they were smashing everybody. So. In 07, <laughs> in Tresman, I had just about that. The only thing that I didn't have was I had, I had six trumpets instead of four. <laughs> but I literally had four baritones, four trombones, four tubas. Like, I, I was like a, a mini Osborne at that point. <laughs> and, I had, and when I tell you Osborne was out there, and 
I was like, I was on fire. Like, I, I was talking mad noise. You know, when you, when, when you ain't got no, you're going to be quiet at home. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking mad noise. I'm talking about, we had the both Asians battle us band that year in Memphis. Now I'm talking about everybody that came through that tongue got it from us. Well, I'm talking about, we were sitting back waiting. <laughs> the only somebody. They didn't catch it. I wasn't doing it. They, I, I, I wasn't ready for the big dog. It was fairly. Fairly was about to almost 200 deep. We weren't ready for them yet. <laughs> <laughs> we weren't ready for them yet. We weren't ready for them yet. And, you know, and White Haven hadn't came out yet. So, you know, those were the big dogs in the city. But I'm, everybody right. else came through there. I'm talking about some dude. Everybody got it from us, man. And we didn't repeat the song not one. So... I ended up leaving Tresby, man, and uh, that's when Hardaway kind of introduced me. You know, he took me down to Jackson and introduced me to Dr. Liddell, and, you know, he, he said something about the boom was looking for, you know, somebody to be a steady arranger for the band. Mm-hmm. So, you know, Hardaway went down there, pulled me up, and, you know, Dr. Liddell told me, you know, I had just got a, a master's in secondary ed at that point, but Doc told me that in order for me to work at Jackson, I had to have a master's in music. Okay. So, I thought that Jackson had one. You know, Doc kind of, you know, Doc made me his grand assistant. Okay, nice. So, yeah, yeah, Doc made me his grand assistant. So, I mean, and I used to think Dr. Liddell used to haze me, man, because that dude used to, man, anytime something came on the radio, he'd be like, just, man, I, I, I need you to do this. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, and like, and, and I mean, because it wasn't nothing for me to, to shoot out an arrangement in, in, I mean, when do you need it by? I need it by tomorrow. <laughs> I was really done, you know, and uh, so uh, I ended up, you know, going to you know part time down there in Jackson, and then I spent one year in the 07, 08, one more year in Memphis City Schools, and there was a high school called Hillcrest High School. Okay, I think I heard so, of them before. Oh yeah, that was my last year in public schools, man, in the 07, 08 year, and then I went on with the Jackson full time that fall of 08. And you know the very first song that I that I was able to put out there for Jackson that just kind of made folks be like, "Hey, who is this guy here?" Was the taxi? You know, mm-hmm. um, I played. We we played the taxi, and then next thing you know, uh, they started asking for other things. So when taxi came out, and then I did uh, "Tell Me What You Want Me to Do" by Timmy Campbell, and then I turned around and uh, Karamu had asked me to do. Uh, Let's stay together for the Southern Harris Classic. So, I mean, I was putting them out that year, like, mm-hmm. like, ch- 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 and everybody was like, "Who is this guy?" You know what I'm saying, <laughs> right? Uh, um, but uh, yeah. So, I mean, that's pretty much how how my legacy how how my legacy got started. You know, into this college realm, man. But that taxi man is what what put me out there, man. Okay. And, that's what's mm-hmm. up, yeah. Because that I was actually gonna ask what was the, your pieces that put you out there. So it was that taxi, and I have heard that taxi. Um, so that that puts it together when I was hearing your name, because <clears throat> I started doing the show in 2012. Um, mm-hmm. So how long were you there at Jackson State, and do you have a memorable experience there uh, with the boom? <laughs> The boom taught me how to live, man. Right, right. Of course. I'm just saying, because, you know, I was, to be totally honest with you, let me, let me now since we on the boom, man, I want to give, you know, a shout out to uh, Dr. Liddell for, you know, for, uh, you know, giving me the opportunity that he did. And then I want to give a shout out to Renato Murray, because when he became the uh, interim director of bands, he was the one that gave me my full-time job on the band staff, oh, you know. Man. So, yeah, and so, and then I want to give, you know, another shout out to, you know, people like uh, Lowell Hollinger and uh, Rod Little for, you know, keeping the thing going, man, because, uh, you know, if, if, if nobody else loved the boom, I, I, I haven't met anybody that loved the boom as much as Lowell Hollinger. Like, I agree. Like, I mean, that, that, that's my dog. That's my friend, man. I love you, Dill, man. If you're watching, man, it, you know. 
Man, I give a shout out to you, man, all the time. Loyal Hollinger was also one of the ones that was giving me some hell, but I know what it was about. <laughs> Loyal Hollinger was keeping me life, man. And like I said, I love that guy, man. I love that guy to the, to the, to the day, man. I, so when I see Loyal, I get hype, man, you know? Because yeah. he's the one that kind of kept me on my toes, and he kind of kept me kept me pushing, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and, um, it's, it's good to actually see see him in that position, too. Um, yeah, man. Lowell yeah, smart, Lowell is man. Lowell is, smart. That, that is great, man. Yeah, he I, was uh, smart in school, man. So it, it's good that you know. I I, I like I like where he, where he is. I I, I well, and, and well, I, well, I also, <laughs> also you know I talk about Taxi a lot, man. But if I had to pick a favorite tune that I did for the boom, man, it had to be in twenty eleven, and that's when I did that. What's love got to do with it? Like, I even sit back and listen to that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I had a, a few that, that I, but that what's love got to do with it, man. I, 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 I love that piece out of any of all the pieces that I've ever done, man. You know, and uh, and uh, my second place piece would have had to been in 09 when I did uh, Man in the Mirror. You know, that's when Michael Jackson, they passed away, so. Right. You know, I was sitting back looking for tunes, man, that I didn't think nobody else was going to touch, you know. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, I, you know, I, but that, that what's love got to do with it, man. If you hadn't heard it, you need to go back and check that out, man. I, 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 that's like my favorite one ever. And, and uh, my favorite, my favorite tune by the boom, like the greatest tune ever. And you may say, uh, you may say this as a trumpet player, you may cuss me out, Joe. But my favorite tune, tune, tune by the boom is that damn Brazilian rhymes, man. Oh, really, Brazilian? Really? You like the Brazilian? You like? Oh, really? Listen, dude, I you to lose it every time we played it, man. Because that's like <laughs> that's like my favorite song ever by the boom, bro. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, dude, like, ever. I can sit back and listen to Brazil Rams all day long, man. That's like my, th- nothing. Jack Stan got to play nothing. Just play Brazil Rams one time, man. Yeah. <laughs> man. I'm done. I ain't got to hear nothing else. That's my favorite song ever, man. Yeah, it's funny. We played that at Smith. Um, but Smith was, you know, Smith had a kind of, with Mr. Gray, it was like fast tempo. We kind of like pushed the tempo with everything. But uh, when I got to the boom and uh, we played a Brazilian round, it, it, it was like right in the pocket. It was like right in the cut. You know what I'm saying? Because Jackson State, we ain't rushing nothing. We ain't in a hurry to do nothing. You know what I'm saying? Right. We chilling. So, uh, yeah, I got some I got some good memories of, of that song. And it was easy because it was a trumpet player. You know what I'm saying? You memorize that song as soon as you, you know what I'm saying? You, you, know, you, you know what, though? You know what, though? Because I had a tendency of when I was in the boom, I had to study the boom when I was arranged. And so, you know, you have to figure out, okay, what the what what sound does the boom want to have for this? Right. So I studied Dow Taylor, his arrangements. I studied Mr. Adams. I studied the Dr. Magruder's. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like between those three guys. So when I wrote Love the Way You Lie in 2010. I wrote it just like Lamar Gully did Brazilian Ryan. Oh, wow. And if you go back and yeah. just listen to it and pay attention and then listen to it, I wrote it exactly just like that. It, it, it had an old, because I'm going to tell you something. We played that song in the bedroom when I was teaching it. You know, I was on the podium. I was nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Because I didn't think the band was going to take to it. You know what I'm saying? Right. And, man, we played, like, the first two or three notes. And the way that those little brass chords hit me, I was like, oh, no, y'all got to play this. You know, and you know in Jackson State Band, or you know the director of bands is up there on the wall. Woo, man, when they played that thing, the room shook, and I thought Mr. Holland was going to fall, man. <laughs> I mean, that's how, that's how bad that's how, I was like. I was up there floating. I was like, I love it. We're going to pass on it over to this one, boy. <laughs> that's what's up, man. That's what's up. So so let me ask you this before, before, I, before I leave Jackson State. Was there any challenges 
when you were there at the band director? Because because I, oh, I only the only challenge. Yeah, what you talking about? So so what challenge? Because the only one, I, only thing I saw, only problem we had was like hazing. But that wasn't like a problem for us. Like we like. Oh, are you talking about just challenges in the band or challenges with me? Or challenges as you as a director, like you as a director, like what was well, the challenge? Me that as is a director, job? man, and you know, you being the son of the program, man, I'm pretty sure that 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 that, that you can understand this. You know, me not being a son of the program, you know, you know how HBCUs we're very territorial about, right. you know, who we have and how we march and all that stuff. Our, our in our clubhouses, right. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. So, uh, uh, you know, I think I was there. I got there. You know, like I said, I got there in, in you know full time in '08, and um, I don't think people knew my name, man, until like maybe eleven or twelve, man, right? because you know I was. You know, that nigga from Pine Bluff, ever since I've been there. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, nobody knew my name. You know okay. what I'm saying? Okay. You know, and, 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 you know, some of the stuff that, some of the stuff that I used to hear, man, you know, I was only there because I was trying to spy on the boom for Pine Bluff. I was trying to steal music from the boom so Pine Bluff can play it. I'm trying to get the boom to sound like Pine. I mean, dude, I heard it all. You know what I'm saying? And, wow. You know, once I finally learned, I mean, yeah, that stuff kind of, it drove me crazy for a long time, man, you know, but, you know, like I said, I won't give up my boom experience for nothing, man, because uh, it taught me to get out of this bubble that I was in, man, it, boom taught me reality, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, I mean, you know, and it wasn't from, like, the band staff or, you know, it wasn't even so much as some of the immediate people that was in the band. It was a lot of alumni, you know, and, you know, people that come around and, you know, there were some band members, but, you know, I can always bag my stuff up. You knew when an arrangement was finna come out by Chisholm, it was gonna actually be something. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. But, uh, and I think the another issue was when you had certain student arrangers that tried to put stuff out in, um, when Murray made me the uh, the uh, the chief arranger, so to speak, you know, a lot of the students were thinking that I was just hating on them and thinking that, you know, um, that uh, I wasn't trying to give them any opportunities. But when I was actually trying to show them, listen, you should fix this, you should fix this. You know, a lot of a lot of people out there are finale arrangers, man. And, and, and when even when I taught the arranging class at Jackson State. You know, they never touched a, they never touched finale or any kind of music software until their final exam. They had to do everything by hand because mm -hmm. I want to make sure that you can actually do it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I mean, and then Matt, Matt, I want to give one big shout out to one of my one of my student proteges, and you you probably have heard his name. His name is Travis Pruitt. Uh, yeah, man. You, you know Travis too, man. man. Damn, man, you know everybody, yeah, oh, man. Yeah, Travis is one of my student protégés, man. Um, in 2009, man, when I was, uh, when I was, you know, Travis lived with me that whole calendar year from uh, spring 09 all the way through uh, the fall. I mean, Travis stayed with me. And Travis was like, hey, Chilson, man, I want to, you know, I want I want to start doing some arranging, man. You know, and I took Travis in and. Man, Travis, well, you know, you hear you hear M A A B now, so you, yeah. you you know what Travis do. Yeah, yeah. I I got him on the docket because I want to interview him too, but man, it, it's so hard to pull the interviews and get them get them worked out together. But he is on my list. Um I actually every time I think of him, every time I see something that I want Jackson State to play, I think about it, I was like, man, I'm a I'm gonna send this link to Travis. You know what I'm saying? Uh because I got one in my head. Uh, that I want to send. I would like to see Jackson State play in the fall, but uh, I, I still ain't sent it to him yet. Uh, so well, you know, Travis well, too. I know in this case, because Jackson State have a system now, so you would have to either send it to Little or either uh, Mr. Kevin Johnson. Oh, uh, okay, 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 okay. That make well, yeah. I'm, I'm glad you told me that because I think yeah, I yeah. You have something. to send it to them guys and uh, uh. So, but uh, with, uh Kevin, Ke Kevin is amazing too, man. But uh. Yeah, man. Uh, that that was like some of my yeah. That that, that was the the strong thing that I had going at Jackson State, man. Um, but uh, you know, I'm I'm glad that I did, and um, uh, 
Dow Taylor, uh, yeah, Mr. Taylor came back in in 2012 and, yep. you know, became Superman and reverted the band. And, you know, I stayed there two seasons after that. And that's when I went on. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, you were there when I started doing the show. Um, uh, so, so then what happened after, uh, you left Jackson State? Well, um, O'Neal Sanford got there in 12. Right. And, uh, O'Neal Sanford kind of, you know, took me in under his wing and he, he became another father-like figure to me in his, in his game. And, uh, you know, oh, one of the things at Jackson State, I'm, I gotta say this. One of the things at Jackson State was Jackson State uh, let me taste another ensemble that wasn't under the marching band ring. Uh, in 2009, no, yeah, spring 10, yeah, spring 10, Dr. Ware, uh, I think his mother or somebody passed away. He somebody passed away in his family. The trumpet player, Dave, Dave was it David Ware, the trumpet Dave, player? Yeah. Okay, yeah, I had him for applied. My uh, he, ninety-seven. He, he was the director of the jazz ensemble too at that time. Okay. And it was time for us to do our spring concert, and he couldn't. He couldn't do it. So Dr. Thomas, you you know Russell Thomas now. Yeah. So he called me up. He was like. <laughs> Bro, chill from all. Right. all right, we need you to do the ensemble. And I thought about you. And I got you, Doc, no problem. I went in, kicked it. <laughs> Doc, that fall, I was the director of the jazz ensemble, too. So wow. I started putting all my energy more in that because I was like, man, I like this. Wait a minute, smaller group. This where I can get recognized. That, mm-hmm. Hey, let me. You know, because, you know, the Jazz on Summer 2 was a group that it was like, you know, the Jazz 1 had these all-staters and top-notch musicians. Yeah, really jazz. good. Really we, good. We had the people who can barely blow their nose, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, so the mere fact that I was able to take this group and I, if, if not compete them on the same level as Jazz 1, I was on this coattail just like that. Mm-hmm. You know? And, and so at that time, man, I'm talking about Jackson State's uh, jazz was like kicking tail. I'm talking about we had the jazz one that was smoking, jazz two was smoking, the vocal jazz was smoking, Dr. Ware had the combo, they were smoking. I'm talking about, dude, it was like, wow. You know, when you when it's time for the jazz on the plaza, man, you never know what you was going to get, man. You was missing, a, man, you was missing something. You know what I'm saying? And, and, a, lot of, and a lot of people don't know that. Um, but Jackson State, the Saudi boom of the South, it's like that because of the actual music program. Exactly. And that's something, something, that's something people really don't know, really don't understand. Um, because I know a lot of people love A and T, and you know a lot of those those programs are great. Now, I'm not taking anything away from them, but the difference in the actual music program itself at Jackson State is, I mean, I, I think FAMS is really really good. But I don't know too many other music programs that are like that. My experience was I was a bandsman. I wasn't necessarily a trumpet player until I found out what I didn't know on the trumpet when I got to Jackson State. You know what I'm saying? Like, I actually started to learn how to actually play my horn as an actual trumpet player. Well, as you know, we had the symphonic band Mm -hmm. and we had the concert band. Mm-hmm. And so I remember one of the questions that I had is in the summertime or I'm in the spring, I would have to try to play myself into the symphonic band because I wasn't mm-hmm. good enough to be in the symphonic band. It was too hard. But the concert band pieces, I was like, well, hold up now. This is supposed to be easy or it's supposed to not be. It's supposed to be a little bit of a difference, you know, but that concert band music was challenging. You know what I'm saying? So that's what it was really what it was like, man, I really I might have to get out of music. But it really made me realize that the Sonic Boom in the South is really built on that actual music program. You know what I'm saying? Well, and see, and, and that's one thing I like about Jackson State. You know, I can't I can't speak for too many others because I don't know. So I let me throw that out there. But yes, Jackson State, I'm talking about like at this point, I think, you know, it was, you know, there was a concert band, there was a symphonic band, there was an orchestra, you know. Um right. 
Taylor has has, has it set up with two jazz on some was a vocal jazz, a combo. You got the chorale, you got the gospel singers, we got an opera in there. I mean, I mean, and then we're not gonna talk about the woodwind or some. I mean, the chamber on some the woodwind on some right. Brass ensemble, the percussion ensemble. You know, I started a saxophone choir when I was there. Oh, you know, wow. so I mean, I mean, Jackson State. You know, say what you want to, but you know, I know that this place is, you know, has it. You know, right. I'm, I'm mad that they don't have a doctorate in, in, in music there. <laughs> I know, right. I know, right. And speaking yeah. of this, you said orchestra. Real quick, I wanted to put out another name for you. Uh, Janetta Powell, I don't know if you know her, but she's from Memphis. Um, she lives in uh, Durham, no- Durham, North Carolina now, but she, yeah, I know with- Janetta Powell, okay. I do. Okay, okay, yeah. yeah. Well, she said mm-hmm. she because I think she said she knew you too, or she recognized the name, but that was what she said was that how she ended up at Jackson State because she's from Memphis and she's right. thinking she about to a school called Overton, that's, that's performing right, arts. performing arts, that's right, and she was like. Uh, I want to go. I kind of want to go to Tennessee State, but Jackson State actually had the orchestra, so mm-hmm. that's how that's how she ended up down there. Um, so yeah, man, that music program was just no joke. You know what I'm saying? Like it was it was the real deal. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, so so yeah. Shout out to the department. Um, so you said it was two was it 2014? Yeah, it was fall fourteen when I left. Mm-hmm. Okay, so where did you go after that? Well, uh, like I said, O'Neill kind of took me under his wing, and he was telling me, you know, he was critiquing me and all the ensembles, and he was like, "Right now, I think you're ready to go out and get your own program." Mm. So you know, I started looking for jobs, and you know, kind of, you know, o- O'Neill's opinion kind of mattered to me, you know, and uh, I started looking for jobs, and. I applied, let me tell you the places I all applied an interview for that year. I applied at uh, Langston, an interview. They offered me the job. Okay. Uh, Fayetteville State, Kentucky State, Steelman, and uh, uh, Lane College. Okay. You know, so um, I didn't know much about Lane. But I interviewed for it, and the vibe wasn't right to me. And that's what it, pretty much what all of them was, you know, to me. But it was I, only one that I didn't get offered a job to was the Fed. I mean, the Kentucky State one. Mm-hmm. But the other, the others did. And Federal State seemed like that, you know, that would have probably been the best spot for me. Mm-hmm. So I went and took the job at Federal State. Okay, you know. Uh, now, uh, I stayed at Fayetteville State only one year. Uh, that was between 14 and 15. And I was building relationships and, you know, doing what I was doing, you know, with the local band directors. You know, shout out to Roosevelt Pratt. Shout out to uh, to James Davis. Uh, shout out to James Richardson. Shout out to Charles Connor. I, I was just about to say, I saw you You had a picture with Charles Connor. I said, man, I just did, I just did an interview with Charles Connor a couple, couple of weeks ago. Yeah, Charles, Charles is one of my best friends, man. You know, Charles, you know, real good guy. Uh, so, you know, I had to give it a, you know, a shout out. And that's where I first met uh, Brandon Rogers, too, man. You know, you know the, uh, the Rogers right, brothers. Right, man, you know? right. Yeah, you know, he's from the area and he came up and, you know, one of his one of his partners that played trumpet for me, you know, uh, Brandon and I, you sit back and talk about a lot, man. And uh, I just started meeting people, man, and. One, I learned a lot at Jackson State, but one thing I didn't learn at Jackson State was the game of politics. Mm-hmm. I didn't learn it because I've always said that, you know, I, I never want to play them. I never want to get involved. I just want to come to work, be in my program, and do and what I home. do. Right, right. But, you know, and that's kind of one of the reasons, you know, uh, why I'm not there now. You know, um, um, at the time, you know, you know, it was kind of some, you know, some things going on and I didn't play ball mm-hmm. and, you know, it is what it is, you know, right. it, it's, I'm now at one of those, if I knew then what I know now kind of situations, you know what I'm saying? Right. Right. So, 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 you know, um, uh, the federal state was, a, I, I, I wouldn't, 
man, I wouldn't trade that experience for the world. So, and how I ended up here at Jarvis. Okay. Um, the vice, my vice president at the time, his name was Dr. Marcus Cheney. He's now the vice president at Lincoln University. But uh, he and I worked together at Jackson State. Okay. And he was like, you know, he knew some people that he wanted it to build. You know, he want, they want to build a band program here. So he, he left Jackson State in 13. So he still thought that I was still at Jackson State. So he called me up in 14. And, I mean, you know, in a, yeah, he left a year before I did. So he calls me up in the spring of 15. And he was like, hey, Rodney, what's going on, man? I said, Doc, what's going on, bro? He was like, hey, man, uh, I'm at this school in Texas. Uh, you ready to have your band program? I already got my band, own band program. What are you talking about, Doc? <laughs> you not in Jackson State no more? Oh man, I'm in, I'm in North Carolina now. He's like, oh man. He said, uh, man, we got this school down here called Jarvis Christian College. You ever heard of? I said, no. <laughs> and uh, he said, uh, he said, man, little old school down here, man. He said, uh, man, I tell you what, we'll fly you out here, man, and uh, you know, kind of interview you, and you know, he kind of basically told me I had the job before I even right. Died. No, I'm I'm doing I'm, I like Fayetteville. What are you talking about? You know, right? So, uh, so I said, uh, so I was like, you know, ain't no, you know, one thing I always learned from O'Neill is, um, ain't nothing wrong with going on the interview. You know, you can go on the interview. So mm-hmm. I went out there and got out of here and was like, man, this small campus, man. You know, man, what is this? You know, <laughs> oh, you know, I got out of here, but. When he introduced me to the provost, you know, shout out to Dr. Uh, Glennell Lee Pruitt, you know, she was a cool lady, and I met President Newman, and started meeting some of the people, hey, these people some pretty nice folks around right here, you know? Mm-hmm. And I was like, man, nah, I'm loving it. He said, I ain't riding. He pulled out that contract, and I saw that salary. I, I said, look, <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> Let's make this happen. Let's make it work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's what's up, man. That's what's up. Look, 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 so look, he, he sold it to me, man. Pulled out the look. This is the same pen right here. <laughs> <laughs> so, so where is Jarvis? Like in, in relation to the major cities there in Texas? Jarvis, we are we are about an hour and a half outside of Dallas. Okay. Okay, so Dallas. Okay. Yeah, yeah Dallas is the closest, like metropolitan, like. Literally, where we are right now, if you go about an hour and a half west, that's about maybe 85 miles, maybe. Okay. It's Dallas. Okay. If you go an hour and a half east, they'll put you in Shreveport, Louisiana. Uh, okay. 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 So, I know you are. So, are you... Co- so, you... What's that other school? Is is Paul Quinn in Dallas? Paul Quinn is in Dallas, but you're probably thinking about Texas College. Texas College is the one because they got a band, right? Yeah, Texas College is in Tyler. That's the city that I actually live in. Okay, okay. Now, is that a black school, Texas College? It is. It is. Wow, it is. man, I didn't. So these schools are like, have they always been? How long has Jarvis Christian College been around? Java's been around since 1912, boss, man. Wow, man. I didn't even know that we had that many HBCUs out there. I I tell you what. The next time you get an opportunity with somebody with one of them HBCU shirts, just look at all the schools on the back. You know you. You know know me, Java's back there. Because I never never heard of the place either. But, you know, I mean, it's off in the cut. It is. Um, But, you know, it's it's not a bad place. You know, I'll, I'll... Oh, I'm, I'm getting into the recruitment piece. Hold up, man. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't ready for this yet. <laughs> well, that's all good. So, um, what would you say so far has been your most memorable experience? And then what would you say is a challenge being there at Jarvis? Well, my most, my most memorable experience, man, is just... You know, just my most memorable one is in 15 when I first got here. We had maybe 12 folks, you know, that I just randomly found around campus 
because uh, before I got here, you know, there was a guy that was here before me. His name was Emmanuel Scales. You know, I got to give him a shout. Mm -hmm. And Emmanuel Scales, you know, uh, he had a bunch of drummers here. You know, he, he tried to do the horn thing, but, you know, it was, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, things can, can be, you know, unmotivating. It, the environment can be, you know. So, you know, you, you have to be a special person, you know, to, to be able to handle a, an animal like Jarvis, you know. Uh, right. But my most memorable moment would be that when I first got here in 15. And then I have to give a shout out to my uh, one of my homeboys that's the band at the Green Oaks High uh, Performing High School in Shreveport. His name is uh, Jeremiah Furlo. He um, he uh, had some some students. And, you know, because we all marched in the band in Pine Bluff, and he was like, and Shreveport is like right up the street. And he was like, hey, man, hey, I can send something to you. So, you know, those people, you know, were the, were the you know, the court, the, the nucleus of the band program, man. And there were some students here, like, you know, shout out to my student director, Jay Wright. You know, she, I've been, you know, she's been holding it down since she's been here. And, you know, I had one of my best friends out of Memphis. His name is Michael Cowan. He, uh, yeah, Mike. Yeah, yeah, I interviewed him. No, 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 it ain't that one. It's another one. Oh, word. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, wow. Okay. One. Yeah, yeah. His name, but uh, Michael was one of my friends. I, I told all my partners this. Every last one of my friends. Every last one of them. I said that uh, if I ever get a band program and I can control my scholarship budget, if you ever need to finish your degree, come holler at me. So in 2015, Michael called me on. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, yeah, come on down, man. You know, you done had some classrooms. So Michael serves as my assistant. He was, you know, my assistant director here. Okay. So, you know, Michael has been with me on this on this long journey, this little ride that we that we, you know, that we call the S3, the sophisticated sounds of soul. Nice. And uh, and uh so Michael has been here with me on that. So my memorable is is in, in 15, uh when we first started, and, you know, I'm so used to, you know, coming from programs like your Jackson State and UAPBs and right. being at Fayetteville State and stuff like that, you know, where I'm, you there's a certain product that you got to put out. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I'm in a program where there was that probably absolutely nothing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm sitting back with this professional mindset, like, you know, man, I can't go out there looking like that, man. What is, you know? <laughs> but... I'm gonna tell you when I finally caught it. We were marching around at the school, the band. We we not have an instrument to the name. All they yelled was four, eight, four, <laughs> eight. That's all they was doing. Everybody bringing their camera phones out. Oh, look, the band look good. The band look good. They sound. <laughs> they know. <laughs> so I went around and, and went against every band director grain and taught them I'm so glad by rope. You know what I'm oh, saying? Wow, wow. Yeah, I thought of, just so we can have one song on the play. <laughs> and they came out and, oh, we got a band now. We got a band now. So, you know, once you give them that, you got to start giving them more. That's right. So, you know, I had a pretty big class that came in in the fall of 16. So, all of a sudden, we went from like 18 kids to like, like 47. Oh, wow. Okay. It's pretty large for Jarvis. You see yeah. what I'm saying? So, um, and then we, you know, went from from that forty seven and, 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 and forty seven to forty eight and sixteen to in, in seventeen we we went up to maybe sixty. Okay. So and you know, I I didn't I didn't do too well in recruitment this past fall. So I um, mean, so um, yeah, we we we're, we're, we're actually growing. We're actually growing, and we're doing some things. You know, the president. Called me in the office the other day, and he said that he wanted he wanted a larger group, and he asked me, and I told him I need some more money. <laughs> you know, them presidents can do that, then they know who to call, and they right. know. So, uh, Doctor Newman wants me to. Doctor Newman gave me a set number. So, uh, any of you band directors that's watching, if I can't make it to your city. Check your mailbox, because I got something in there for you. <laughs> you know, I'm just saying, I, I got it in there for you. And, and you asked me about my greatest challenge. My greatest challenge is the mere fact that we are in the middle of nowhere. Right. You know, and, and a lot of the students don't, you know, 
you know, if they don't know you, they're not going to come. But, you know, give Jarvis a shot. You know what I'm saying? You know, you're not you're not missing any, you know. I One of my things I always ask people, and this is me not downplaying any of your larger programs, your Southerns, your Jackson, your PVs, you know, A&Ts. I'm not down to any of your programs. But one of the things I always like to ask a student, you know, is your name, I'm going to use you as an example, is your name Joe Beard? Who is your name? 782218. And they be like, Joe Beer. Exactly. Because if you go to a larger school, you're going to be a number. Uh, Come to Jarvis. Uh, everybody, know, everybody know everybody around here, man. Like, for real. You know, we have roughly a thousand students on campus. You know, um, we are. Uh, uh, we 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 have all sports except for football, but uh, I'm I'm hoping that change pretty soon. Um, what type of performances we 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 do a lot of you know local things. We go up to Dallas, we go to Shreveport, you know, we do a lot of in-house stuff here. Um, but this fall, you know, yeah, I'm I'm gonna start being in the conversation in people's mouth. I really am. Um, I'm just trying to do what I need to do um, to to make it to make it happen here um, at Jarvis, man. And uh, I'm not even so much as looking for the top notch musicians at all time. You know what I'm saying? You know, send me send me that if you had a if you had to rate a player from one to five, five being great and one being you know that person just holding the horn. I take a one, two, or three. Because I vowed to be a teacher, mm -hmm. and maybe my teaching method couldn't work for you, for that child. For this, I mean, your teaching method couldn't work for that child, but mine will. You understand what I'm saying? Right. But the job is we believe in giving in any and everybody an opportunity. You know, um, here's something that we do do. Uh, we don't have um, engineering here. We don't have nursing here. We don't have dentistry here. Uh, but no, nah, we don't have those here. But we have a partnership with the University of Texas. And Tyler says that if you spend two years at Jarvis, you get to go to those other schools for free for your junior senior year. Oh wow! Okay, and then yeah. you can then transfer. Yeah, it transfer is over. You know, mm -hmm. but there's one catch. You gotta go to class, and you gotta keep at least a three point. What is it? It's a three-point GPA. I know that because those particular, you know, those particular fields and majors um, are very competitive. Yeah, so barely slipping through the cracks, then you're not going to be able to get in. Um, let's see, our business department are nationally accredited. They just passed that last semester. Our social work is uh, nationally accredited. Our uh, education is nationally accredited. The school is credited, accredited by SACS. So you come to Jarvis, you're not getting a piece. You're not getting a piece of tissue paper. You're actually getting a degree that actually weighs something. You can and you can actually look all this information up. You know, uh, we 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 have you know we have music as a major again in the fall. Uh, right now, if people are applying, it's listed under interdisciplinary studies uh, with the emphasis in, mu in music, but we're going to have a BA. So in the, with our department with Dr. Uh, Lee, oh, yeah, Dr. Lee, Dr. Beers, myself, and uh, Mr. Bruce Thompson. Uh, you probably know Bruce Thompson, man. He was teaching at John C. Smith at one point in time. That sounds familiar, that Thompson. He was the choir director at John C. Smith. I need to see. I need to see his face because there was a there was a woman uh, there. Another thing about Jarvis is ninety percent of the faculty here are doctors. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, so you know, there are very few misters and misses around here. It's, yeah. It's yeah. Doctor, you know, it's doctor this and 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 which is a great thing. You know, uh, I mean, even so much as the director of human resources is a doctor. You know. So, um, we mean business around here at Jarvis. We really do. Um, 
when uh, our president, Dr. Newman, got here, the graduation rate was extremely low, but it's now it's now climbing up the chart. We went from like, I think like 9% into it. It, it has gone up into like the mid-20s now, you know? So we're growing. You know, we're actually growing. Uh, one thing, one thing I can say as far as probably something that's true about your program. I had, I've never been there before, but when I was at Smith, there was definitely a family atmosphere in the band. So, as you could attest to, a lot of times, especially probably when you were at UAPB, your closest friends, other than your, I mean, your crab brothers were, your, but it was usually the people in your section with you. Like those were the closest people. And those kind of were who you hung with. You know what I'm saying? Right. But I'm sure at your school and my experience at Smith, man, like the whole band was cool. Do you know what I mean? Like uh, one person I thought about when you talk about your uh, building a program was uh, Chris Jones. Uh, Chris told me that he's come to uh, a, couple, uh, a band camp to help with your drum majors. Uh, so... My relationship with Chris when at Smith, you know, he was a he was a drum major, but he was like one of my best friends. And same thing with uh, this dude Craig, who was in the tuba. Like it was, we were all on the same page regardless of our 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 instruments. Versus like when I went to Jackson State, you know, pros and cons and stuff. But I was really close with the guys who played trumpet. And I even to this day now, I see somebody that I marched with on Facebook. And I I don't I don't really know them like that. You know what I'm saying? So I guess definitely I know Jarvis. Uh, I'm sure that you guys have a real good family atmosphere. Uh, we do there we do. Um, um, and that's one of the things that 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 I, I I even try to instill in all of the students. You know, um, what happens in the bedroom? You know, that's that's us. You know, and everybody who's watching this can attest to this, but. When you think of a, a band member or a band or just a person just in the band, period, you you, you you think of that person as being a wolf. And do you know the evolution of a wolf? A wolf never travels alone. Mm -hmm. You know, or if you think that you see a wolf by his him, himself, uh, chances are there is another, a few wolves that's either close or nearby. Ninja, as a band member, don't we operate the same way? <laughs> yeah. Same. It don't matter where you go. Joe, you can get up and go to the mall right now, right where you at. I bet you you're going to run into at least five band members in there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that happens all the time out here. You know, just no, just not where you at anywhere. Right. Because... And, and that's what I, 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 that's the, that's the example that I teach with my students. You know, a band member, we stick together no matter what. You know what I'm saying? Yes, we gonna argue. Yes, we gonna fuss. We gonna fight. We gonna cuss each other. And I ask them all the time, how many of y'all got siblings in the room? Raise your hand. They raise their hand. How many of y'all done fought your sibling before? <laughs> okay. Now. Do you still do you hate your sibling to this day? No, exactly. When you fight your brother or your sister, do you take it to school the next day and tell everybody about it? No, why not? Because it was in your house. Mm. That's how we are in this room. You know what I'm saying? Every band member in the world is your brother or your sister. Y'all may not come from the same house, but y'all cousins. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? Right. There were 10 schools in the swag. I, UAPB was my house. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But we knew people in Prairie View Band. We knew people in Texas Southern. We knew people in Valley. We knew people in Alcorn. You know, we knew people in Jackson Southern, Gremlin, the Alabama schools. We knew people in every band. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that's how that works, you know? Well, that's what's up, man. That's and what's then up. Chris, yeah, Chris came up here in that in that in that sixteen year, that year that I told you I had my big class. Uh -huh. Chris came up here, he did my drum majors, we did the mods aerobics thing. Uh as a matter of fact, 
the Montrovis thing, man, it took out pretty well out here, man, because, uh, man, my students, it was funny because some of my larger students, when they was doing it, and Chris had them doing it, man, they was losing weight, and you could see it. <laughs> Yeah, you can see it in their faces. Their faces all small and stuff. Chris, I mean, Chris worked them that year, man. And it got to the point where we started selling Montserrat's around the school, man. And, man, people started coming over there and doing it and having fun with us and all that stuff, man. I mean, it was, I mean, I, I, I got to give it up to Chris, man. He got he got a product with the Montserrat's. And uh, I, I, I'd be remiss if I, if I, if I'm, if I fail to mention another ask a facet to my team, my dance line. I have, a, I have a bunch of beautiful young ladies that go by the Gold Rush. Gold Rush. Gold Rush. All right, all right. Yeah. So yeah, they, they, they are some very talented young ladies. You know, shout out to you know Shatavia Greg. You know, we call her Smurf. You know, she, you know. <laughs> She she puts up with with Doc going off on them all the time, but you know that's my captain. I love her to death, and you know she she's from Shreveport. You know she's you know Miss 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 whatever one of these queens, Miss Junior. I think she's <laughs> she's doing her thing. On a student, you know she's she's into research, you know, and, and trying to find cures for cancer around the school, but. She still manages to do what she do. So you know, Shante, you keep doing what you're doing, baby. You. You raising the bar for Gold Rush. Uh, my niece, Bria Mars, she was the one that, that, that pioneered and started it. Mm-hmm. And Shantae, we just took behind her. So, you know, uh, you know, shout out to, to Gold Rush. That's what's up, man. That's what's up, man. Well, we're getting towards the end of the interview, and uh, <clears throat> I knew it was going to be longer, man. We've been talking two hours, man. We've been talking for a minute, so I knew it was going to be long. Uh, but yeah, you did your recruitment pitch, but is there anything else that you want the listeners, uh, to know about Jarvis? And is there anything that you want the young, uh, the young musicians or the young music majors, uh, any advice that you have for them? Or even as, I guess, even as your students, you know, any advice that you have for your students? Well, listen, I want, I want to give this to, you know, first of all, if if there's any, you know, band directors or, you know, um, young, you know, students watching, high school students or anybody, you know, don't be afraid to give a, you know, a small school a chance. You know, uh, a lot of you all, a lot of us can't make it in big schools, you know, Mm -hmm. bigger schools, you know, one of the the other things that, you know, between Tennessee State and UAPB at the time, Tennessee State was a big world and UAPB was a small campus at the time. So that was also another reason why I was able to, you know, flourish into what I'm doing. So, uh, um. Uh. So, you know, give a small school a chance. You know, if you if I'm in I'm in Texas, so I have to reference these schools. If you living down here and you want to go to Texas Southern or 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 Prairie View, it's not the end of, and you can't get in. It's not the end of the world. Jobs Christian College, right here in Hawkins, Texas. Hit me up. I got some for you. You know what I'm saying? I got some for you. I don't care what you play. <laughs> you're going to get you a degree. You're going to get a good band experience. And then you're going to learn something here about life and everything in the world. So, um, job is Christian college. Like I said, you know, give it, give it a chance. You know, you, you may not, you, you may not know what you can do until you actually do it. You know, mm-hmm. um, when I was a high school band director, one of the things that I wanted, I wanted to go to Tennessee State and I did. And I understand that there are several students. When I was a high school band director, I used to ask my students, where do you want to go to school? At? You know, and my job was pretty much to get them there. You know, I didn't I didn't force UAPB on my students because that's where I went to school. Right. But, you know, if you wanted to go to UAPB, let's get you in UAPB because I want you to feel that, that you're going to be happy. Mm-hmm. You know, and if you can't get into the school that you wanted to get to, then I'll send them to UAPB because I know I can get them there. Right. You see what I'm saying? Right. And, you know, I know Mr. Graham will probably kill me if you heard me say that. But, <laughs> but you you don't but but you have to give give it a chance, though. So I say that to say this, you know, you may not get into these larger schools. You know, like I said, where I'm at right now. Texas Southern is only three hours away from me, you know. Right. Prairie View is three and a half, maybe. Grambling is only two from me. 
You know, so I'm in the middle of all these giants. You know what I'm saying? Right. But you know, like so, if 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 a lot of you all can't make it, Jarvis Christian College is, is come on out here. Give me a call nine zero three seven three zero four eight nine zero extension two one five three. You know, <laughs> hit me up. I got you. Well, artism at Jarvis edu. You know, so um, and so yeah, come on out. You know what I'm saying? If you want to Skype me, you want to FaceTime me, look me up on Facebook, Rodney D. Chisel. You know, I'm on I'm on Instagram. Uh, our our Instagram is Sophisticated Sounds of Soul. You know, on Instagram. You know, I ain't I ain't got the I ain't got the uh the, uh, the Snapchat. I don't know how to do that. I'm an old guy. So. Yeah, I, I ain't I ain't picked that up either. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's what's up, Rodney, man. I, I appreciate it, man. I give you a round of applause. Uh, definitely sound like you're doing your thing and you on your way. And uh, I'm excited for you, man. I'm pulling for you, man, because um, I like the parody. I like saying that, you know, there's so many bands out there. You know what I'm saying? So uh, putting Jarvis on the map. Now, is there any performances we can look for you guys in the fall? Well, I'm working at schedule out right now. Uh, Mr. Christian at Whitehaven asked us to uh, if we would try to do an appearance at the Southern Harris Classic Battle of the band. So um, I'm trying to I'm trying to you know do the inner workings for that. And um, let's see as far as that go, uh, we have a few parades here and there that we got going on. So I mean, I'm getting phone calls, you know, for people to come and. Uh, try to get us to play it in places and and I'm glad because my students we need that exposure and we need to you know um when I when I when I was talking to Bridget a while back I said yeah it's the, it's time for us to go on on out here and I can't hide them no more right. you know what I'm saying so right. it's time for us to come on out here and let these band connoisseurs uh uh eat them up, eat them alive you know what I'm saying yeah yeah so, go ahead so yeah it's it's it's, it's, it's been too long so you know when you when you when you when you see that when you see that, that, that blue and gold come down the street, it, it ain't the one that y'all think it is. It's, it's gonna be <laughs> else. So, uh, but uh, but uh, uh, job is yeah. C- 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 tell everybody come on out to the doghouse. Okay. Come on out to the doghouse. It get it go down at the J. It do. It goes. <laughs> hey, let me say something. It's our homecoming week this week, y'all. Okay. Yeah. So you know, I kind of slid up here from you know we had a little. Old, Kick off pep rally, and I had to slide up here after that. So you know, oh, okay. <laughs> uh, and, uh, so, uh, yeah, it's our homecoming, and uh, so I want to say happy homecoming to all the Jarvis alum who's out there watching and whatnot. And uh, uh I want to give a, a shout out to my girl Nadia Johnson, babe. I love you. I hope you watch me, and I hope you saw this. You know what I'm saying? You know, she out there in Florida doing her thing. I give you a round of applause. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's what's up Rodney man well I sure appreciate your time man it was a really good talk and now I, I got you hooked up so you know I'll be probably hollering at you all throughout the year and everything and if it's something else you know you want you need for Jarvis or something let us know um, I think one thing that would be good because I, I was talking to uh, Dr. Davenport about it was uh, allowing if uh, you guys have some students coming to your school let us know and we can feature them on the National signing day for marching bands, because that would be probably that's good. a great idea that you guys are doing with that with that with that national signing band thing, the signing day thing, man. Yeah, I, I, that's a that's that's one great idea, man. Yeah, so I would like to highlight your school and you know highlight Simmons to help you guys get off the ground. You know what I'm saying a little bit. Um, so yeah, I definitely I'll be in I'll be in talks with you about that uh, as we move forward. Um, but yeah, man, anything else before we, we at the end of the podcast, anything else you wanted to say before we sign off? No, man, I, I thank you for having me on and for everybody that's out there in the chat room, man. Uh, thanks for, you know what I'm saying? Your comments and things like that. I'm pretty sure that you're going to, you're going to, you're going to talk about it later on. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, smash time. Hit me, hit, hit me up, man. I'm, I'm looking for you, man. Hit me up, you know? And, um, uh, Thanks again, Joe, for having me. Uh, Bridget, thanks for, you know, recommending me 
to be on the show. And uh, man, I hope to work with you guys even, even further in, in, in the future, man. Oh, you definitely will. You definitely will. Since I know you, you pretty much know everybody. I already know you, Rodney, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We know each other, Joe. We, <laughs> For we, real. We, we each other. We just battled each other on show. I know. <laughs> that's crazy. Well, that's what's up, man. I sure appreciate it, y'all. Uh, Rodney Chisholm, director of bands there at Jarvis Christian College. All right. If you're interested in becoming a sponsor or a patron to the Marching Podcast, please contact us and we'll give you the criteria so we can start to pub your business using our platform. You see down there at the bottom, the little ticker and you got the commercials. Shout out to Smokey O's Barbecue. Let me just give it a little a round of applause. Uh, that is now like the hottest commercial on the streets. People that they don't know nothing about that smoky old barbecue, man. Uh, <laughs> I think, barbecue. And I think he in the Dallas area too. Uh, I think he's somewhere around that area. He trying to launch off his his restaurant, man. So he need he need to come out to to Jarvis and Kate and Kate one of y'all band competitions or something. You know he need he need to do something because I never heard him until I heard him on your show. <laughs> yeah, I think he just started. I think he just started out. But yeah, man, he trying to get it going down there in Dallas. So uh. I'm gonna have to check them out, man. I spent I spend every other weekend in Dallas, it seems like, man. So, you know. Yeah, yeah, that'll work. I, and, and in fact, both of my sisters live in Dallas. And I support black owned businesses, bro. So what is it called? Smoky Old? Yeah, Smoky Old Barbecue. You know what I'm saying? I will sing the song for you, but you know what I'm saying? I, that, right, that's, man, that's I gotta cool. hear it, man. That, that commercial funny to me, bro. <laughs> that's like Bloods Barbecue, bro. Tastes so good, slap them up. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up, man. Well, it was good to talk to you, man. And uh, I'll keep up with you. And uh, okay. I'll let you know when I do the editing and put it on the blog and all that stuff. But, man, real good conversation with you, man. Man, man, thanks for having me again, man. No problem. That's all the time we have for the podcast. Check out the website, Donate What's In Your Heart to the Marching Podcast.com. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. Thanks to you for listening. And remember, the eyes of better pupil are more willing than the ear. Advice may be misleading, but examples are always clear. See you next time.